Chen Fan was the hero's name, and he moved to a different world when he was 10 years old. Chen Fan teleported to the new world, where he was joyfully dancing and boasting about his god of needlework feet. He was also the system's host, and at that very moment, his system, the greatest deity of all Dao systems, appeared. Dao system tried to be pleasant, and she complimented him on his work. But in her mind, she was thinking otherwise because Chen had mentioned that as a man, he would never do anything like embroidery. Chen Fan approached her with excitement in his eyes, and requested her to teach him how to cultivate. But the system, refused, telling him not yet. Chen Fan responded perfectly, assuring her that he had fulfilled all of the chores she had assigned him. Zither, calligraphy, painting, poetry, music, martial arts, agriculture, forestry, heading, and fishing are among the tasks. He then yelled at her that he did all trades and professions to compete for the title of God. He then yelled once more. Chen was enraged since it took him 10 years to finish all of the chores she assigned to him. He asked her if she knew how he had spent the previous 10 years. As she tried to laugh it all off, the system felt a little sorry. She then asked him if she hadn't accompanied him for the last 10 years. Chen Fan simply reminded her that her so-called accompanying is that he practices while she merely watches, eats, and sleeps. The system turned away, and she tried to make an explanation, telling Chen Fan that she needed to relax. Chen Fan inquired if she was unable to practice, she felt agony in her chest as a result of what Chen Fan stated. She was upset as the Supreme God turned around, he misinterpreted what she desired for him. Chen was perplexed because he had no idea what she was on about. The system notified him that the host had learned all system skills and that the hosting mode will be activated in three seconds. What is the hosting mode? Chen inquired. His clothing were taken off, and a blue glow surrounded him. Chen Fan teleported somewhere, and he asked if she was playing with him, and he cursed her angrily. His dog noticed Chen approaching and was relieved to see his owner. Chen said joyfully that Xiao Bai is amazing and that he can hear his voice through the door and that he's not that horrible. Xiao Bai approached him, and when he looked up, he was stunned and shocked. When Chen Fan noticed Xiao Bai's stunned expression, he told his dog that he had an accident. He was embarrassed because his dog just sweated as he complimented him for covering this area of the Manhua. He then hugged his dog and whined that the system was more dog than he was. He grumbled, that the system claimed she would teach him how to cultivate after he learned all traders and professions. But the dog didn't pay attention because he was uncomfortable with Chen Fan holding him, and Xiao Bai was thinking in his head that he didn't have this fetish. But Chen Fan didn't care since he kept talking, telling him that he didn't anticipate her to be so bad, and also directly letting him to farm online. Chen Fan was taken aback when he realized he was in this place. The realm of demonic tranquility and natural martial arts. Chen Fan saw a demonic beast but mistook it for a normal hawk, assuming he was already here and didn't need to do anything. Without her restraints, he reminded himself that tomorrow is a big day, and he'll go out to learn from a master. His dog only stared at him, tired from trying to break free from his hug. Chen Fan scratched his dog, sensing that he was hungry, and informed him that they would play a hunting game today if he waited for him to pack things. His dog was so delighted that he leapt on Chen Fan, shouting for his dog not to jump on him since he didn't have any clothes on. I can't believe this is when Chen Fan realized he didn't have any clothing on. On the other hand, we witness a terrible beast swooping around, attempting to kill someone. When the wicked beast attacked, a beautiful woman yelled that her jade sword sect would not spare him. Yi Qingwu was the Jade Sword Sect Master's daughter. The evil beast talked cynically to her, telling her that the third and seventh elders of their Jade Sword Sect had long since deserted to their Beast Sect. He informed her that the Jade Sword Sect was already in the hands of their young patriarch. Black Hawk was one of the Hundred Beast Sect's four guardians. Yi Qingwu was taken aback, thinking that this was inconceivable and that her father had to be alright. The horrible beast yelled, it's best to take care of herself first. Yi Qingwu was stunned and terrified, unable to defend herself against the wicked beast's attack. And the horrible beast struck, and Yi Qingwu screamed in agony. And Yi Qingwu began to plummet from the sky, thinking that if she could land in the mountains or forest, its flying power would be reduced, and she would have a chance to fight back. At worst, they'll perish together. 
The nasty beast figured out what she was up to. He asked her if she was attempting to dupe him into landing in the mountains or woodland to battle him in close combat. He questioned if she believed he was so dumb. And the terrible beast attacked her with his long-range strike. Yi Qingwu is aware that she has been observed, and that the strength gap between the early and late stages of the martial arts spirit is too great. Yi Qingwu was covered in bruises and wondered if this was the best she could accomplish. Meanwhile, Chen was preparing to shoot an arrow from a cliff in the background and he exclaimed in amazement that he had seen the great eagle again. He was preparing to fire his arrow at it, and at that instant, Chen transformed into a god of archery, shouting to Xiao Bai once again that they would enjoy roasted big eagle tonight, and he didn't see that his bow and arrow were flashing gold. The terrible beast was offended and yelled, he is a hawk. He instructed Chen to shoot him. As an arrow was heading right for Chen, the wicked beast used his technique to deflect the arrow. But the arrow pierced the wicked beast's technique, and he was stunned as he sweated bullets in dread, wondering how this was possible. As the arrow pierced the terrible beast's chest, it yelled out in agony. He died slowly, and his final thought was that he had been shot by M. Mortal. Yi Qingwu approached the wicked beast to see how it died, and when she looked closer, she noticed a Dao pattern, which startled her. This arrow actually has a Dao design on it. Xiao Bai hurried towards her, his heart racing, and Yi Qingwu looked up as he saw Xiao Bai sprinting towards her. Chen Fan yelled at Xiao Bai to calm down, and no one was going to rob him. Yi Qingwu heard Chen Fan's voice and wondered if this was the name of the dog. Xiao Bai plunged off the cliff because he wanted to be closer to her, and his aura and presence were sensed by Yi Qingwu. Yi Qingwu was taken aback. What a powerful demonic chi! She realized after experiencing the extent of his power that this dog is a peak martial arts spirit. She stood up and began to wonder if this person, Chen, could choose a martial spirit demonic beast as a pet, and she assumed that the owner must be strong, and she was relieved to believe that the Jade Sword Sect had been saved. Chen Fan was glancing at Yi Qingwu a few minutes later. He then inquired of Xiao Bai as to why there was someone present. His dog was not paying attention. Instead, he was staring at something else for no apparent reason. Anyway, Yi Qingwu was shocked since she couldn't see the qi of this martial art, and she assumed that this was due to an expert's hidden qi. And when Chen Fan saw Yi Qingwu's loveliness, he flushed and believed she was as lovely as the fairy in the picture. His dog gave him that expression because his heart was racing. Yi Qingwu knelt in respect and murmured softly, Senior, please save. But before she could say anything else, she began to lose consciousness. However, before she could totally close her eyes, she noticed Chen Fan approaching her with concern, and she realized she had reached her limit, and Chen Fan wondered what had happened to her. Chen Fan rescued her before she fell and further injured herself. The protagonist was shocked that she could hang on till now while being so seriously injured, and he assumed she must be a martial artist. The protagonist told himself that the following step was up to her. Despite being crowned god of medicine, he had one flaw, his medical knowledge was limited to mortals. He is unsure whether martial artists will work. Chen Fan looked at his hand and stated that if he could cultivate as well, he would be able to heal her easily. Suddenly, the door swung wide, and someone or something inquired, wouldn't I be able to fly as well? It was his dog, I guess. Chen Fan speed walked yelled at Xiao Bai not to rush him, and said, let's pluck the birth feathers. Yi Qingwu awoke an hour later, shocked that her wounds were healed, and she realized she had been unconscious for nearly an hour, according to the shadow of the sun what impressed me about her was that she had a correct perception. Yi Qingwu was dubious of that master, she corrected herself, and concluded that senior, Chen Fan was unquestionably a recluse master. And if he can enlist the assistance of the senior, she will be able to eliminate the Hundred Beast sect. She was thrilled, though, as she turned side to side on the bed, thinking about how soft and comfortable this bed was. She became startled when she noticed something. She looked around the bed, noticed a light blue aura, and recognized the pattern on the bedstead in the qi on the mattress. She knew there was no mistake. It was the Dao and qi pattern. She was briefly whisked to another dimension when she looked up and noticed the writing and painting on the wall. The world she was in was so magnificent that the heavens were covering the mountains, and when she spotted two holy beasts, she knew she was in the mortal palace holy land. 
she was astonished once more when she spotted a large scroll and realized it wasn't the divine martial content. This was a more potent force. She read a portion of what was written on the scroll. The yellow river gets its water from the sky. She was suddenly transported to a martial arts metal stage after reading this. She was taken aback when she saw how quickly her strength was developing just by reading these few lines. Her strength advanced to a martial spirit late stage, but it didn't stop there, it continued to grow until it reached the martial spirit peak. Her eyes shone with strength. She was sweating bullets once her powers had finished increasing, realizing the world she was in was hidden in the picture, assisting her to enlightenment. What is this technology? She wondered. Chen Fan passed by and noticed she was awake. Yi Qingwu was a little worried, so she asked him where he came from. Chen Fan gazed at her calmly, perplexed by what she was saying. Chen Fan assumed she was referring to his birthplace and asked if she had ever heard of Earth. Yi Qingwu reddened slightly as she pondered the Earth? I feared she was going to suffer whiplash from turning her head so quickly. She wondered if this was the world shown in the artwork, however, she realized that she had never heard of it. She knew she couldn't be too clueless in front of an expert just now. Chen Fan wondered whether anyone knew where the earth was and if he could still return. Meanwhile, Yi Qingwu noticed that the world in the painting is quite similar to the Forbidden Land in the legends. She then informed him that she was familiar with the planet Earth. Chen Fan exclaimed in surprise, has she heard of it? He was so surprised that he began to sweat. She began to explain how Earth is analogous to the divine martial material in their ancient legends. It is also the location where the spiritual aura is dense and substantial, with old beasts strewn across the highlands. And, just as powerful people may handpick stars, powerful demonic animals can devour the sun and moon. She said all of this while smiling. She explained further by saying, Many martial artists have fantasized about the sacred land of cultivation. Chen Fan was taken aback and wondered, is Earth really that awesome? He asked himself again if she was certain they were talking about the same location. He asked her if she really knew where the Earth was. Yi Qingwu fake coughed, thinking that what she was saying was real, and that the senior possessed enormous powers that had come from the Forbidden Land to break the emptiness. She made a shaky motion with her head. She knew that the Forbidden Country had long been a mystery existence, with only a few divine martial warriors knowing where it was. She smiled brightly and informed him that she was in no position to know such secrets. Chen Fan looked at her with cold eyes, and he wondered if this girl's brain was normal. Chen Fan was surprised when she kneeled and inquired what she was doing. She begged him to accept her as a disciple, and will serve him for the rest of her life in exchange for saving her life. Chen Fan was speechless, and he assumed she had a mental illness. And she's a martial artist who worships a M mortal as her master. Yi Qingwu was sweating profusely and wondered what she was doing. She began to believe that Senior had protected her, healed her, and even assisted her in breaking through, and this was already a huge help, nonetheless, she wishes to revere him as her lord. Chen Fan approached her, and she looked up to see his stern expression, thinking he was angry? I guess Yi Qingwu felt Chen Fan was about to do something else when he touched her neck to check her temperature. Chen Fan moved closer to her almost touching their noses and lips, but before they could, he mumbled, you don't have a fever. He grinned brightly and motioned for her to take his hand in hers. Yi Qingwu was red-faced. She was taken aback by his grin and generosity, as well as possibly something else. Chen Fan simply replied calmly, reminding her that he was only a mortal, and that she should stop referring to him as his master. For some reason, there was a light behind him when he said this. A minute later, the light disintegrated, and Yi Qingwu yelled in fear that Chen Fan had dubbed himself M Mortal, she believed she had truly offended him. Chen Fan just gazed at her, perplexed. She kneeled once more, depressed about what kind of person she was. She wondered how she might make Senior treat her like a simple M Mortal. And she thought she wasn't qualified to be a slave or a servant. Chen Fan turned around and went, telling her she might rest a bit longer, and the power of misunderstanding intervened, and when Yi Qingwu glanced at his back, she wondered why Chen Fan called himself immortal. She started to believe that the senior is posing as immortal in order to experience recreational in the human realm. 
Yi Qingwu became enlightened when she realized that loving him as her master had exposed his cover and troubled him, as well as seeing this realm, and she assumed Chen Fan was displeased. She tightened her hand and refused to give up, telling herself that she had to fix it. She exited the room, thinking Chen wanted to perfect his heart through this realm, so she chose to treat him as a mortal in order to be closer to him. And she will make him happy. Yi Qingwu considered Chen Fan, as one would expect of a master of skill and ingenuity. Meanwhile, Chen Fan was cooking the horrible beast he had captured. Yi Qingwu was still staring at Chen Fan, thinking about how he claimed to be immortal, and he's so subtle and attractive that he doesn't betray the chi of a martial artist. Meanwhile, Chen Fan was drooling and speaking cheerfully, it certainly smells wonderful, and how it lived up to his title as God of Cooking. Yi Qingwu bowed respectfully, telling Chen Fan she was a young and innocent girl who had insulted him, she begged him to forgive her. Chen Fan just glanced at her lazily, as if her brain had returned to normal after arrest, and how it now appears much more normal. Chen Fan smiled brightly at her, assuring her that she was on her feet again, he inquired as to her well-being. Yi Qingwu embarrassed and approached him, asking him shyly, that she hasn't asked his name, Chen Fan grinned and told her that his name was Chen Fan and that she might call him by his first name. Yi Qingwu said that she would address him as Sir Chen. If it's okay with him, Yi Qingwu told him to name her Xiaowu. Chen Fan presented her the meat, informing her that black hawk meat is delicious. Xiaowu was taken aback and astonished to learn that this was the black hawk, one of the hundred beast sect's four guardians, she wondered how it could have been roasted in this manner. Chen Fan then inquired if he would like to share it with him. Xiao Wu became uneasy and manufactured an excuse. She thanked him for his thoughtfulness at first, but she has other pressing matters to attend to and doesn't want to disturb him right now. Chen Fan rose up and told her he'd see her off, but Xiao Wu stepped back in horror before he could. She was stuttering in terror, begging Chen Fan not to bother seeing her off because she was leaving right now. She was shivering in terror as she feared the awful beast. But, on the other hand, it's natural why she's shaking with dread. In any case, eating an evil beast is similar to eating a demon. Xiao Wu was terrified and jumped away from Chen Fan. Chen Fan smiled, thinking to himself, as is typical of martial artists, about how she can soar and disappear right off the ground. He then wondered when he will become a martial artist. Meanwhile, many people were found dead at the Cloud Sword sect. Others who were still alive, on the other hand, were battling. Beasts were fighting humans. Even though the man fighting all of these beasts was exhausted, he spoke to the other people he was looking at, Yang Tai and Li Tiaxin, and cursed both of them. He coughed up blood while telling them how beautifully he had always treated them. He then questioned them, asking why they had betrayed the sect and joined the foreign adversary. Yi Jing Hong was the patriarch of the Cloud Sword sect. The muscular man Li Tiaxin responded, explaining that he had been locked at the top of the martial arts spirit realm for 30 years and couldn't break through. He inquired as to what the objective of everyone following him was. The old man with the long beard also responded, informing him that the Cloud Sword sect would be destroyed by the Hundred Beast sect sooner or later, and how they made the right decision. Yi Jing Hong exclaimed, how shameless they were and if it wasn't for them collaborating with the Hundred Beast sect to attack him, but he was cut off before he could continue. With an arrogant smile, this jerk approached and told Yi Jing Hong to quit. A sensible man, he told Yi Jing Hong, conforms to circumstances. This conceited jerk offered Yi Jing Hong the option of joining his Hundred Beast sect in exchange for a potion as an elder. Qin Hao is the Hundred Beast sect's youthful master. Yi Jing Hong was enraged, shouting that he wanted him, Yi Jing Hong, to surrender. He told the conceited jerk that the Hundred Beast sect is unworthy. Qin Hao, the arrogant bastard, responded calmly, urging him to help him kill him then. Yi Qingwu arrived to the rescue, floating in the air, and yelled for Yang Tai and Li Tiaxin, calling them shameless traitors. When Qin Hao, Yang Tai, and Li Tiaxin looked up, they saw Yi Qingwu still shouting at them from the skies. Yi Qingwu took out a blade and told them that she would clean up the sect today. Yang Tai and Li Tiaxin exchanged glances and giggled. Li Tiaxin expressed his concern that the beauty might flee, but he didn't expect her to return so soon to die. 
Yi Jing Hong yelled at Xiao Wu, wondering why she had returned and telling her to hurry up. But she didn't pay attention as she gently told her father to leave this battle to her. His father told her to quit babbling. Qin Hao is at the pinnacle of his martial arts abilities, and she is no match for him. He called out to her again, telling her he'd hold them off and that she should flee. Qin Hao smirked cynically and ordered his men to kill Yi Jing Hong and capture Yi Qingwu, to which both Li Tiaxin and Yang Tai reacted promptly. Yi Qingwu whispered, ungrateful traitors die, and his father was astonished to hear this. Li Tiaxin and Yang Tai were stunned and sweating bullets as they recognized this was peak martial spirit. Both understood she had reached the pinnacle of the martial spirit realm. How could it be possible? They wondered but they will never know since Yi Qingwu attacked them both with her dagger. Qin Hao, the arrogant bastard, was sweating bullets as he yelled that she was still in the early stages of martial spirit. He then questioned her ability to complete three stages in one day. His father was astounded as well, that his daughter was so courageous. Xiao Wu was furious as she pointed to Qin Hao and told him it was his turn. Qin Hao yelled for his men to go, his men were all taken aback. While they were fleeing, Qin Hao glanced at them and yelled at them, warning them the Cloud Sword sect will be destroyed. And he yelled again for the Hundred Beasts cult to leave. The Sword sect was relieved, shouting that they had triumphed and cheering that they had kept the sect. Yi Jing Hong was still taken aback. What the hell was going on, he questioned Yi Qingwu. We now hear about Yuha Island which is located in the actual East China Sea archipelago of the divine martial content and is governed by Chilling. On the island, there are three prominent sects, the Hundred Beasts sect, the Cloud Sword sect, and the Scared Sound Valley sect. The Cloud Sword sect's nameless mountain is located on the east side. That is where Chen Fan resides. Yi Qingwu told his father where she was and who she met a few minutes later. His father glanced at her and told her that if what she had claimed was true, the senior was from the forbidden country of Earth, and she had overrated herself in worshipping him. Yi Qingwu sighed and glanced down. She admitted to her father that it was her fault. And, thankfully, senior Chen Fan was gracious and did not dispute with her. Yi Qingwu had an idea and recommended to her father that they simply fly up to the mountain. Yi Jinghong exclaimed, What does she know? They can only express their respect to their forefathers by strolling. He showed her a peculiar pendant, and he urged his daughter to present this cloud sword jade disc to the senior as a way of repaying him for his life-saving grace. Although the cloud sword jade disc is their sect's inherited jewel, Yi Qingwu expressed concern to his father that Chen Fan might not enjoy the jade disc. Yi Jinghong revealed to his daughter that the cloud sword jade disc is naturally worthless in the eyes of senior, Chen Fan. But they must also offer their most valuable possession to demonstrate their sincerity. Although Qin Hao was temporarily repulsed, Yi Jinghong understood that the Hundred Beasts sect would return, and the Cloud Sword sect could only survive by hanging to the thighs of a senior like him. After a few hours, Yi Qingwu pointed to Chen Fan's house and informed his father that they were almost there. Her father was relieved because he had been exhausted by the long walk. When Yi Jinghong touched the bridge with trembling hands, he was stunned and surprised. A gold dao was used to cover the bridge and he noticed the rushing water, which was steaming with spiritual qi. He was astounded to find the entire courtyard covered by the Tao line and auspicious clouds when he peered ahead, the immortal qi is rushing to the sky, as Yi Jing Hong was astonished. Yi Jing Hong was astonished and amazed once more when he beheld Zhang Tianqing, the legendary ancestor of all trees. This was the illustrious ancestor of all veins bundle dragon vine. The bird atop the tree belonged to the famous ancient beast Golden Sun. The crow was staring at Yi Jing Hong when he gazed at it. Yi Jing Hong yelled in disbelief, terrified. Yi Qingwu inquired about her father's well being. Yi Jing Hong screamed in terror because the earth's might was terrible. Meanwhile, Chen Fan was sitting outside his house, muttering to himself that he wanted to live in this world calmly and freely. A knock came at Chen Fan's door. He was astonished to see a visitor? He warned the people on the other side that he was on his way. He was shocked to see Yi Qingwu when he opened the door. And Xiao Wu grinned brightly, apologizing for bothering him again. Chan admirer inquired as to what brought her here. 
Xiao Wu enthusiastically replied, informing him that this was her father, and he had learnt that she had been saved by the senior Chen, and he requested her to bring him here to thank him personally. Yi Jing Hong froze when he saw Chen Fan. When Yi Jing Hong saw the toothpick in Chen Fan's mouth, he began to sweat profusely. And Yi Jing Hong immediately recognized it as a big profound weapon. He recognized that his sect's jade butterfly is merely a middle-level profound weapon that cannot be compared to a toothpick? Chen Fan simply thought to himself that he couldn't meet a guest with a toothpick in his mouth, so he spit it out, and as he did, Xiao Wu and Yi Jing Hong's eyes widened in surprise. And they both resented the fact that the top-grade profound weapon was just spit out on the ground like saliva. Chen Fan invited Xiao Wu and Uncle Yi Jing Hong to join him for a cup of tea, and both consented. Yi Jing Hong kindly advised Chen Fan that it would be better if he called him Old Yi so that he could relax. He was even more surprised when he viewed the inside of the yard, because this was a top quality purple spirit flower? He was astounded by this pool, which was full of spirit springs. While Chen Fan and Xiao Wu were walking, Yi Jing Hong took another look around and noticed that the garden arrangement corresponded to the numbers included in the Heavenly Tao of the Great Diffusion. He wondered if this was indeed the legendary Nine Emptiness returning divine configuration. Chen Fan grinned inside, knowing that this was his masterwork, which he had painstakingly restored after becoming the god of gardens architecture and sculpture. Chen Fan stared at him and asked Old Yi whether he knew anything about gardening and architecture. What does he think about the layout of his courtyard? He inquired. Yi Jing Hong was scared and sweating profusely. He reasoned that because the expert Chen Fan enjoys pretending to be immortal, he would have to play with him like an expert. Yi Jing Hong knew he wouldn't enjoy it if he boated too much. Yi Jing Hong let out a sigh. Suddenly, he began to shout, proclaiming that this mansion was exquisitely built. This pavilion was created nicely, and the plant that was planted here was perfectly positioned. Chen Fan was taken aback. Yi Qingwu was simply humiliated. Chen Fan laughed as he invited both of them in for a cup of tea. He assumed Yi Jing Hong was just a regular farmer. Yi Jing Hong seemed depressed when he heard Chen Fan's chuckle, and Yi Qingwu glanced at him with concern. Chen Fan made the tea inside the house when he finished pouring the tea. Yi Qingwu and Yi Jing Hong both drank the tea. Chen Fan smiled at them, telling them to slow down so they didn't choke. Yi Jing Hong was astounded to discover that this tea carried a terrible spiritual energy. He was startled to learn that there is a specific power that goes through the meridians of the entire body. It also miraculously repaired Yi Jing Hong's past interior injuries. He was astounded that it was more potent than a miracle drug. He exclaimed in delight because his tea was so delicious. Chen Fan wanted to tell Yi Qingwu to sip her tea before it became cold, but he froze in surprise when he saw Yi Qingwu looking at him seductively. Meanwhile, Yi Jing Hong was taken aback when he noticed that after Xiao Wu drank the spiritual tea, she had advanced to the third level of the Jade Heart Sutra at this precise moment. Chen Fan stroked his chin, nervously smiling, and asked Xiao Wu whether she had a soul test stone with her. Yi Qingwu looked surprised at him. She was glad after a few seconds because she was sweating bullets. She was relieved since she had almost addressed him as master. She reprimanded herself, believing it was inexcusable, but she was jolted awake by senior's shout. Chen Fan, she thought, saw right through the oddity of her spirit skill training and stopped it in time. Yi Qingwu answered, saying she had brought it, and she raised her palm, and a blue aura emanated from her ring. It is believed that martial artists have odd rings that can even hold mountains, and it appears that this is true given what is emanating from Yi Qingwu's ring. The martial spirit of martial arts can interact with the soul stone. Chen Fan was astounded by the soul stone. Yi Qingwu smiled uneasily as she told him to place his right hand on the palm impression. And he did precisely as she instructed, placing his palm on the print. Chen Fan was worried. If he has a martial spirit, he would locate a sect, train from a teacher, and finally conquer the world by getting to the top. When he touched the stone, nothing happened, and even a cup of tea time had passed. Even the bug was zipping by at high speed. Yi Qingwu and Yi Jing Hong were taken aback. They couldn't believe Yi Qingwu lacked a martial spirit. Chen Fan was perplexed, informing Yi Qingwu that the soul test stone hadn't moved in a long time and that he didn't know what to do. 
He asked Yi Qingwu if he has a martial spirit. Yi Qingwu was taken aback, she had no idea what was going on. She was so taken aback that she wondered whether the world had gone insane. She couldn't figure out why Chen Fan didn't have a martial spirit. Yi Qingwu sighed, dissatisfied in himself for lacking martial spirit. He turned and went away, he was so depressed that he believed the system had abandoned him and that he was trash. Yi Qingwu asked his father quietly, why doesn't Chen Fan have a martial spirit? Yi Jinghong responded, muttering back to her, how can an expert be devoid of martial spirit? Yi Jinghong revealed that Chen Fan had to have employed a strange method to invalidate the soul test stone, and how deserving he is to be a master. Why should he pretend not to have a martial spirit and be unable to cultivate? Yi Qingwu wondered. As he questioned her, Yi Jinghong became irritated. What exactly does he know? Yi Jinghong reminded her that for an expert, witnessing the joys and sufferings of mortals' existence, whether laughing gleefully or cursing angrily, is all cultivation for the mind and for mortals, and he asked her what was the most painful thing she had ever experienced. Yi Qingwu pondered the most agonizing aspect. Nothing was more terrible to her than not possessing a martial spirit and so being unable to become a martial artist. And how to continually live a vapid and mundane existence, being the most lowly and humble creature on the divine martial content. Chen Fan is allowing himself to feel the sorrow and misery of not having a martial spirit and not being a martial artist, Yi Jinghong thought. Meanwhile, Chen Fan gazed up at the magnificent sky, still pained by what had occurred. Yi Jinghong was serious when he told her that this was a fantastic opportunity. Yi Qingwu confronted her father. What exactly does he mean? His father explained, instructing her to soothe Chen Fan, to allow him feel the warmth of the mortal world and grow her mind, and to do so, Chen Fan will comprehensively, will undoubtedly remember her. Chen Fan closed his eyes and imagined that he could do whatever he wanted with the system and reach the summit, but he didn't expect this to happen. He ragedly opened his eyes, pointing to the sky and cursing her. Why is she teasing him like this? He asked. He didn't notice Yi Qingwu approaching him when he was yelling at the system. But he did hear her ask him if he was all right. Chen Fan turned around to see Yi Qingwu smiling warmly at him, telling him that the soul test stone she brought might have a problem. She consoled him, assuring him that even if he couldn't become a martial artist, it was okay to be immortal. Chen Fan was taken aback when she comforted him, he also thanked her. Yi Qingwu showed her their family heirloom, she told him he saved her life, and she begged him to accept this jade butterfly. Chen Fan was taken aback and assumed it was a sign of love? He examined the heirloom and thought the jade was good, but he was hesitant to accept it because the carving was terrible. And he believed it should be too valuable to accept. Yi Qingwu was cheerfully smiling. She could see from the look on his face that the jade butterfly was nothing special. Yi Jinghong was also aware of this. Yi Qingwu kept smiling. She informed him that it was becoming late and that they would be returning. Chen Fan gently informed them that he would send her. Yi Jinghong felt ashamed when he asked Chen Fan to assist him in throwing out the garbage. Chen Fan was perplexed, supposing that Yi Jinghong must have suffered greatly in order to pay for Xiao Wu's cultivation. After a minute, he consented with a smile. He showed him the black hawk flesh and told him how nice it tastes and how nutritious it is, and how it tastes like a snack, and how he can carry it with him. Yi Jinghong expressed gratitude for the beef. In their imaginations, Yi Jinghong and Yi Qingwu pleaded with Chen Fan not to send them away. Chen Fan bid them farewell and yelled out for Xiao Wu, inviting her to come play if she had time. With a cheerful smile, Yi Qingwu agreed. Meanwhile, someone sitting on the throne spoke to the arrogant bastard Qin Hao, telling him that Yi Qingwu only possesses an early stage martial spirit, but she broke through three times in such a short period of time, and how it's truly unthinkable. Qin Hao responded that he doubted Yi Qingwu had come upon such a nice opportunity. Only if they obtained the elixir offered by Sir Envoy and were able to break through to the summit from the early stages, one after the other, said the ogre to the arrogant bastard. But he was nonetheless curious as to how Yi Qingwu had broken through three times in a succession. This was the Hundred Beast Sex Master, Qin Peng. Qin Hao, the arrogant bastard, replied, saying that's why he's temporarily fled, to ask father to decide. 
The ogre then turned to Envoy, who was standing next to him. What is his opinion? Envoy's one eye shone brighter, and he spoke, assuring them that there are just stories on Yuha Island, and Taoist Huoyun's treasure can only go so far. The arrogant bastard smirked viciously, declaring that this was a fantastic opportunity, and how no one has discovered it in hundreds of years. Envoy warned them that if the Hundred Beast sect can take advantage of this opportunity, they will become more powerful. The arrogant bastard bowed and begged his father to give him an order. He told him that as his son, he is willing to lead the sect's elite to wipe out and steal the treasure of Taoist Huoyan. The ogre said that this is a once-in-a-lifetime chance. The envoy instructed the ogre to spread the word that the Cloud Sword sect had obtained the treasure of the Taoist Huoyan. The ogre explained what envoy truly meant, and he requested that they allow them to have a dogfight. Envoy smirked cynically, knowing that they would simply sit back and take the profits. The ogre and his kid both smirked at this, and there was darkness all around the Hundred Beast sect. Yi Qingwu told her father to come here after Yi Jinghong and Yi Qingwu departed Chen Fan's compound. She instructed her father to open it. Inside is a high-quality tool. Yi Jinghong agreed and, shocked, opened the box. He was shaking with awe since the tool he was holding had such a powerful aura. Yi Jinghong exclaimed, stunned, that Chen Fan's junk is truly a tool worthy of being the world's powerhouse. Yi Jinghong let go of the toothpick that Chen had been using earlier. He was stunned when he held the toothpick in his hand, because he knew that if somebody used the toothpick's power, even a sliver of it might demolish a whole mountain. Yi Qingwu was astounded when she told her father that Chen's valuables were terrifying. Yi Jinghong remembered that he had originally intended to return to the sect, to immerse himself in the incense Chen Fan had given him, and to enjoy it. But it was so appealing, and he wanted to consume the meat Chen Fan had given him. Yi Qingwu told his father that this isn't much meat, but he should eat first. Yi Jinghong nibbled the flesh while closing his eyes. He was taken aback after chewing into his meat, and he was surprised this meat has such spiritual strength and flavor. He suddenly began to consume the meat like a ravenous lion, and when he was finished, he dropped the box. And he yelled as he exploded with power, unsure what to make of this spiritual strength. Yi Jinghong was stunned, unsure whether he had broken through. Yi Qingwu was astounded as well, because her father had been locked at the Martial Spirit Pinnacle for 30 years, and he would never have been able to break through with his qualifications. But after eating Chen Fan's stick of meat, Chen Fan changed her father's fate. When Yi Jinghong discovered what had occurred, he praised the senior for his advice, he will never forget his wonderful kindness and virtue, and he bowed repeatedly in thanks. Yi Qingwu was disappointed because Chen Fan had asked her to remain for supper but she had declined, and now she was sorry she didn't remain. And now that she's missed her chance, she's not sure when she'll be able to enjoy Chen Fan's delectable pork again. The next day, an ant began to stir. Meanwhile, Xiao Bai was happily chasing a bird, which chirped in terror. When the bird approached Chen Fan, his dog came to a halt and shuddered in terror, understanding Chen Fan was there. Meanwhile, Chen Fan was focused on his inventory, and as he was doing so, he cursed because he had no more space in his inventory, and so he couldn't bring a tent. He was going down the hell to find a place to set up camp after glancing through his inventory. While he was walking down the hill, a bird landed on his shoulder and stroked its head against his cheek. He laughed cheerfully, saying that he'd seek for the soul test stone that the sects utilized, and that bringing his dog and bird along would be inconvenient. His dog was running around him, staring at him in awe. He directed Xiao Bai, his dog, and Xiao Nayo, his bird, to look after the house until he returned. His dog glanced at him as he walked away, and as soon as he was out of sight, his pets converted into their original forms, and his bird instantly boasted that his owner patted him and even called him by name. His dog objected, but his master called him by name first, and he will always be number one in his master's heart. This was Xiao Nayo, the celestial phoenix, and Xiao Bai, a wolf rather than a dog. Other unknown beings, such as that ant, appeared, and the ant sighed, grumbling that this was the 10,086th time his master hadn't employed him. This was the legendary demonic ant. Bundled Dragonvine inquired if the master intended to act like a commoner attempting to follow the path of the Tao. 
Xiao Bai became enraged and informed them that it was none of their business, and he asked the ant why the master hadn't contacted him because what credentials does he have to be summoned? The demonic ant screamed angrily that his master hadn't kicked him out, and thus he must be aware of his existence. Because he didn't identify Chen, Xiao Bai assumed he hadn't been kicked out. The demonic ant began to mourn silently as he refused to believe that his lord would desert him, because he is entrusting him with his life. The heavenly tree elder told them that this was wonderful because it meant that there were more people with great spiritual energy, and that they would protect the house that their master had entrusted to them. Chen arrived in Qingxi town and smiled as he greeted the merchants, who returned his smile. What kind of goodies did he bring to the market today? inquired the other merchant seated nearby. But before he could say anything, a mysterious woman whispered in his ear, assuring him that the Escort sect is patiently awaiting his return. Chen shuddered in horror as she breathed a scorching breath against his ear. Chen leapt away in terror, yelling at her not to come near him. The enigmatic woman simply smiled at him and told him to relax, they wouldn't eat him. They're not going to change him. Chen simply turned around and rushed away, not bothering to thank the woman. Someone suddenly grabbed his hand as he shouted out to him, Young master, come and sit, we will discuss today's new dishes, and he must investigate. Chen acknowledged him as his superior. Chen realized that business was still thriving. The boss grinned and gently told him that they all relied on young master to teach them how to cook, and the Fuyuan Inn was becoming increasingly vibrant. The boss began to sweat as he told him that recently, Qingxi has become more vibrant, and they don't know why, but a lot of martial artists have been drawn and have taken up residence on the second level. He asked him if he wanted to stay on the first floor for a while. Chen then began to ascend. Martial artists and mortals are extremely different, according to Chen, and he guessed that Boss Wang was probably concerned that he would be uncomfortable sitting on the second floor. And he was well aware that martial artists do not eat humans. What's there to be afraid of? He asked himself. Chen grinned and said, no problem, and that he'd go to the second floor. Boss Wang agreed and ordered him to sit comfortably. A cup of sake crashed in front of Chen, causing him to cry, and Boss Wang clapped his hand for some inexplicable reason. Chen was spying on the master of one of the martial artists. Another conceited jerk was speaking with someone on the floor, and he inquired if he wasn't Xiaoyan, the Lin family's genius, and why is he working in such a rundown establishment? but the individual on the floor remained silent. People began to wonder about Lin Xiaowu. They began to question whether he wasn't the prodigy who began martial arts at the age of eight and had a martial spirit breakthrough at the age of nine. The other idiot just murmured. It's too bad that when he turned ten, he suddenly lost all of his spiritual skills and became useless, and the Lin family kicked him out. Chen frowned and wondered why this narrative seemed so familiar. The guy on the ground clenched his teeth in rage, thinking that if it hadn't been for that blasted old man consuming his spiritual abilities, he wouldn't be here. The arrogant bastard smiled arrogantly at him and dropped the coins on the floor, then told him to kneel in front of him three times and he'd tip him a gold coin. Xiaoyan Lin? Lin Dong was infuriated as he clenched his fist and murmured his name. He stood up and demanded that he stop bullying people, and the Lin family had already abandoned him. What else does he want? He turned and went away, but the arrogant guy yelled at him to stop right there, and he questioned him, saying, who said he couldn't leave? Lin Xiaoyan responded that he is a bully who always bullies the vulnerable. Lin Xiaoyan generally talks to himself, according to Boss Wang. Boss Wang told Chen that if it hadn't been for an elderly guy draining away his martial spirit, he would not have been expelled out of the Lin family and his fiance would not have cancelled the wedding. Chen then inquired as to whether the old man who was torturing him had gone insane. Lin Xiaoyan walked past Chen, and something happened that terrified him. Chen's hand had a faint blue aura that contacted Lin Xiaoyan's body, and the elderly man rushed from Xiaoyan's body. The old guy was scared when he sensed this and Chen's overwhelming aura. Lin Xiaoyan gazed at himself and was relieved that a parasitic old man had fled. Suddenly, he screamed out, the heavens have recognized. Now that the elderly man has passed away, he can finally cease being a servant. Chen couldn't figure out why he was suddenly laughing and sobbing. He suspected he was insane and wanted to assist him, so he approached him to assist him. 
Lin Xiaoyan stared at Chen and understood that the old man was definitely afraid of this guy, and he must have seen his worries and decided to help. He bowed low in respect while exclaiming, Thank you, senior, for your kindness? Chen was taken aback because he had only sought to assist him, he informed him he didn't have to treat him like a god. Chen extended his hand and told him to stand up. And Lin Xiaoyan was astounded but also perplexed as to why he lacked a martial aura. He assumed it was because he was too powerful, so he concealed his abilities, and how this was an opportunity he couldn't pass up. The arrogant jerk exclaimed, trash is trash, and why would he assist him? He yelled once more that he had lost all reputation in the eyes of the Lin family. Lin Xiaoyan was enraged because Chen wanted to say something. He yelled, he could disrespect him all he wanted, but not other people. The arrogant bastard mocked him, claiming that two pieces of trash joined together, so what if he insulted him? What is he going to do about it? Chen put his hand on his shoulder and encouraged him not to be upset. But Chen didn't realize he was giving Lin Xiaoyan his spiritual energy, and Lin Xiaoyan felt it as he was stunned that a touch from the senior could give him this much power and he could feel his terrifying strength running through his body. And his martial spirit was progressively growing. Lin Xiaoyan indicated Lin Dong. He yelled angrily, he was defeated by him years ago, and that will never change. Chen Fan's strength was now surrounding Lin Xiaoyan, and before he could attack, he told him that he would forever be under him. The arrogant jerk attacked while yelling for him to die. And they battled, and the arrogant bastard was stunned because he couldn't believe Lin Xiaoyan possessed martial spirit power. He had no idea how that was possible. And Lin Xiaoyan overwhelmed him, punching him in the face, and blood poured out of his nose. And he crushed on the table, and everyone was astonished, and Chen's eyes widened in surprise because he believed this person was acting weak. He couldn't figure out why a martial artist was working as a servant, and he was convinced he was mad. Meanwhile, Lin Xiaoyan was overjoyed that his power had returned. He continuously bowed, grateful to the senior for restoring his cultivation. Chen glanced at him, puzzled, and wondered if this guy wasn't making fun of him on purpose. Chen Fan was perplexed and questioned Lin Xiaoyan whether he had hit his head on something. Because he is only a mortal, how could he have fixed his cultivation? Lin Xiaoyan was perplexed as to why Chen referred to himself as a mortal. And the power of misunderstanding intervened once more when Lin Xiaoyan believed Chen was resting. And in that scenario, he will not reveal his cover. Before Lin Xiaoyan did anything, Boss Wang told him, as he pointed to the dishes on the table, that those were the last dishes we'd made, and he begged him to kindly try them. Meanwhile, Lin Xiaoyan bowed respectfully and whispered, thanking him for his generosity and virtue, and he made a commitment to say, I, Lin Xiaoyan, will never forget that. And he informed him that he couldn't repay him right now, but that when he became famous, he would be there to help him. He then walked away to retrieve his belongings from the Lin household. While Lin Xiaoyan walked away, Boss Wang poured sake or water into a bowl and told his young master that he can see that he has a bag, he then inquired as to where he intended to travel. Chen responded by saying he was looking for a martial arts sect to join. Boss Wang warmly smiled and told him that with his expertise and talent, those sects must be lining up to hire him. Chen began to suspect that he was worrying for nothing. And what if Xiao Wu's soul test stone actually was broken? But he discarded the idea. Boss Wang spoke up, informing him that the Sacred Sound Valley sect is now holding a martial arts exam in Qinxi. And if he meets the standards, he can enter and train straight under them, so he should give it a shot. Chen exclaimed in astonishment and amazement, as he realized it was the Sacred Sound Valley sect, one of the three great sects. Boss Wang grinned and assured him that if he decided to join the Sacred Sound Valley sect, he would congratulate him ahead of time. Chen began to eat more quickly, believing that the soul test stones in the Sacred Sound Valley were the most powerful. And maybe, just maybe, he still has a chance. He deposited money on the table, and Boss Wang was perplexed as to why he did so. He asked him to please return it. Chen simply walked away, waved farewell, and informed him that he would be attending the martial artist test in the Sacred Sound Valley. He was in Qingxi Town's center square with his buddies, who were all cheerful that he had come to take the martial arts test. This was mentioned by the blacksmith of Zheng Qingxi town. Others who respected him were delighted to see him, 
and the guy with a bandana in his head told him to go first. The other one responded, informing him that with his good looks and wide knowledge, he would easily pass the test and join the hallowed Sound Valley sect. They all believed in Elder Chen and his character as a wonderful man who is kind and courteous. Zhang Hedgai stated that if he hadn't assisted his blacksmith business, it would have had to close. The third guy in the back went on to say that Senior Chen taught Boss Wang's cooking talents, Dr. Chen's medical skills and his crafts, and how no one in this hamlet has escaped his generosity. There are a lot of people here, Chen said to Xiao Chao. Xiao Chao responded that even if people are unable to enter the martial arts test, they can still view a beauty's blessing. Chen Fan glanced ahead, his eyes widening in astonishment at such beauty. Chen is envious of her bright eyes and pearly teeth, allowing others to view her as if he wants to defend her with his life. This was Qin Yin, the sacred Sound Valley sect leader's daughter. She stared at him and smiled, thinking that this guy was respectable and lovely, despite being surrounded by so many villagers, and she assumed he was unique among his peers. When Qin Yin gazed at him, he blushed and stared at her in awe. And she motioned for him to come here. Chen Fan blinked, shocked that she had urged him to go first. Everyone in there smiled and agreed that he should go first. And the guy in front of him smiled, telling him, who would have imagined the beauty to notice him among the crows? So exceptional? He expressed his admiration for him. Zhang Head Guy called out, saying that Senior Chen is a teacher to hundreds of people in Qingxi Town and that such a wonderful individual will undoubtedly be able to become a martial artist. And they all started cheering him on, Qin Yin thought, amazed that he's so popular, and this is exhilarating. Chen became concerned, thinking that this soul test stone was comparable to Xiao Wu's, but the fearful Sound Valley had a large sect, so the soul test stone shouldn't be an issue. He pondered. Qin Yin instructed him to put his hand on the soul testing stone. And he'd done it before, so he figured this time would be different. Following a stick of incense, Qin Yin closed her eyes and stated that he would never be a martial artist, she told him to go. Qin Yin was dissatisfied that he was not a lifetime genius, she hoped he was a genius. Everyone was stunned, and Xiao Chao tried to console him by telling him that everything was fine. Even though he lacked martial spirit, he is the instructor who trained everyone here. It's fine not to be a martial artist, and if he stays in town, they still have a lot of questions for him to answer. They hadn't seen each other in a long time, according to Zhang Headperson. He advised him to get drunk tonight, and told him to go fetch some sweet-scented osmanthus wine to taste. While they were saying this, Chen Fan looked down, disappointed that his ambition of becoming a martial artist had come to an end. Meanwhile, an old man was walking about the Cloud Sword Sect discussion hall. Yi Jing Hong was sweating because he didn't know what to say. The old man mentioned today to Brother Yi, and is what he said true? Yi Jing Hong drank the tea and exclaimed, everything he said is true, and why should he be skeptical of his own words? The old man said in surprise, what are you saying? That guy was lying to me. He exclaimed, Ching Wu's breakthrough and his unexpected breakthrough, and the meat that was able to assist him breakthrough right away? He asked him who he should believe the most. Yi Jing Hong gazed at him passively and assured him that all he stated was true. The elderly man was enraged because he thought the head of the Cloud Sword sect and himself, the master of the Holy Sound Valley sect, were good friends, but he would lie to him, and how heartbreaking it is. Yi Jing Hong stared him in the eyes and told him that he had met a senior because of Xiao Wu's opportunity, however, because senior travels frequently, he didn't want to bother him. Brother Qin then asked him if he was aware of the recent rumor. He clenched his teeth in rage and told him that in this martial realm, the last Hoyan Taoist was said to have resided on this Yuha island. And possibly this treasure left by the Hoyan Taoist. Yi Jing Hong interrupted him by slamming his hand on the desk and shouting to Brother Qin, what does he mean? The old man sadly looked aside and informed him that there was no meaning and that he only wanted to inform the major sects to congratulate Brother Yi on his breakthrough. Yi Jing Hong was serious because he understood that if Qing Potion purposefully propagated accusations that he had obtained and hidden the treasure of the Hoyan Taoist, the Cloud Sword sect would undoubtedly become a target in the public's eyes. Yi Jing Hong thought that this was the only choice left to bother the master again? Yi Jing Hong grinned and expressed his gratitude, he then inquired if he wanted to see the master. He will take him there, but he will not mention cultivation. The old man also grinned and agreed, 
telling him it was no issue. However, in the elderly man's head, he was thinking of other things, such as how he wants to see how long this old man will fake it. Yi Jing Hong turned back and instructed him to let him summon Ching Wu, who was hoping to meet the master. The old man had an epiphany and reasoned that in such scenario, he will direct Qin Yin to follow. He imagined an entertaining scene if Brother Yi lost face in front of the young generation. Yi Jing Hong, Yi Ching Wu, and the others were on their way to Chen Fan's residence. Ching Wu inquired of her father, Is what Uncle Yi said true? Why does it sound like a fantasy? The old man said to her it's a lie, and to see how he exposes him. When Yi Jing Hong and Yi Ching Wu realized they were getting close to their objective, they hopped down from their swords, and Yi Jing Hong told Yi Ching Wu that they are almost there, and they will walk the rest to pay respect. But the old man didn't stop, murmuring whether that was even necessary. He told Ching Yin that they would continue. Yi Jing Hong shouted to the old man Qin Potion to stop. Yi Ching Wu was concerned as he inquired of her father about what they should do. Yi Jing Hong yelled angrily at them to follow them down because if they insulted senior, they'd be ruined. Qin Potion arrived at Chen Fan's house, and when he arrived, he was dissatisfied. Where do the birds that don't poop and the strongest live? And he began to mutter, Tsk tsk tsk, Yi Jing Hong, are you playing me for a fool? Qin Potion began to release lightning from his palm, and he realized he had to see what this so-called master was capable of. Qin Potion, stop, Yi Jing Hong yelled, but before he could launch his strike, lightning struck Qin Potion, knocking him down. Qin Potion landed painfully on the ground, leaving Yi Jing Hong and Yi Ching Wu motionless and dumbfounded. Suddenly, the small little ant transformed into a monster, speaking in a demonic tone, you mortals dear show no respect towards master, you will perish. Qin Potion was terrified as he knew this was the ancient demon ant. He begged his brother, Yi Jing Hong, to assist him. Oh great one, we are friends with the master, we wouldn't dare to disrespect him at all. Yi Ching Wu and Yi Jing Hong bowed. Please spare us. Ching Wu was stunned, and Qin Potion was horrified and bewildered because the ant does not appear to be here to meet the master wholeheartedly. The demonic ant roared near Qin Potion before he could rest, and Qin Potion shouted in terror. The ant demon was ordered to stop by the heavenly elder tree. The ant demon became outraged, telling the Qing Emperor the heavenly tree that they were guilty of invading the palace. Everyone wondered if it was the name of the Qing Emperor. Everyone was shocked, except for the old man, who was scared, when Yi Jing Hong realized it was the heavenly tree. They were all aware that only one person qualified to be dubbed Qing Emperor on the heavenly martial continent. And there was the matchless person who triumphed over an era in the last years of ancient times, defying the sky and becoming emperor. In addition, the emperor died 90,000 years ago. They wondered if it was the same name. The Qing Emperor responded that the guilty should await the arrival of the master for his judgment. The ant demon responded in a diabolical tone, claiming that a group of ants being slain would not even garner the master's attention, it's amusing that he said ants. Anyway, when Qin Potion and the rest of them heard what the demonic ant had to say, they were scared, and Yi Jing Hong yelled for Qin Potion not to bring him down with him. The Qin Emperor directed Dragon Vine to bound the demonic ant. Dragon Vine responded, and tied the evil ant. The demonic ant roared, shouting at Dragon Vine to let him go. Dragon Vine told the demon ant to stop, and Master is kind to the public and does not allow the slaughter of innocent people. Why inquired the demonic ant? Telling him that he is simply removing impediments that would annoy Master, he spoke in a satanic tone. Fear gripped Yi Jing Hong and Qin Potion. The demonic ant was slammed to the ground by the Dragon Vine and the heavenly tree yelled at him to stop right now, this is your final warning. The evil ant began to sweat bullets in panic as he heard this. The demonic ant began to shake in fright as the celestial tree began to unleash his aura. The demonic ant began to calm down, and he threatened them, telling Yi Jing Hong, Qin Potion, and the others that if they said anything about what had transpired now, they would perish. When Qin Potion glanced at the ant, he began to wonder why he hadn't heeded Brother Yi's advice. Chen Fan was in the Qingxi blacksmith shop at the time. He was still upset about what had occurred earlier. Zhang head person consoled him, saying it didn't matter if the senior couldn't cultivate. Everyone in town still respects him. Zhang knew that Chen was stomping on the arrogant heavens, 
standing with an ancient emperor and numerous beauties. Chen stared down at his sake, sadly. Zhang Head Guy grinned and assured him that whatever he did would be considered a blessing. Chen slammed the sake on the table, yelling angrily, saying you got that right, and I was born to be useful, and I will also turn 360 bloodlines into geniuses. Zhang laughed and told him he was drunk, they celebrated by consuming sake. After finishing his sake, Chen realized it was getting late and that he needed to get back. The guy smiled and asked Chen, why don't you stay the night? Chen's pulse quickened as he realized that if he stayed, this guy would be too near for comfort. As a result, he refused. The man then smiled and followed Chen outside. Chen was still inebriated as he swung around for being drunk when he said. Before he could say anything, his friend observed something, and his eyes widened in surprise. Meanwhile, the horse was furious as it stole this guy's bacon. Chen was also taken aback when he found himself holding a rope. While this was going on, the horse was yelling angrily, I'm a horse, and my entire family is made up of horses, he told himself that he was the dragon clan's crown prince. Zhang Gai and the horse began fighting over the bacon. Chen motioned at the horse and yelled at it to let go, if he doesn't, he'll beat him. The horse scowled angrily at him and told him to come give his ass a massage then, he reasoned in his head. And Chen did just that. Chen didn't notice his rope was sparking with qi yet again, and when the rope struck the horse, it suffered great pain. The horse stumbled and shouted out, wondering how the mortal could have harmed him so badly. Chen gazed at the horse and wondered, isn't this horse strange? His pal did not respond after telling him that he believed this horse and him were fated to meet, why not take it with him back home? His friend asked. He told him that if the horse is neglected, the horse might steal his bacon again. Chen considered it and agreed. His friend urged him to look at how pleased the horse was because it was now accepting him. However, the horse was not accepting Chen, it was yelling for him to get away from him as he cursed angrily at him in horse language. But Chen had no idea since he grinned gleefully and agreed that it was fate, and he would retain it. Chen began to mount the horse, and the horse in his head threatened him that if he got any closer, he'd send him flying. Chen was beaming as he ascended the horse. The horse's eyes widened as he felt heavy, and the horse was perplexed as to why his legs were not reacting. And why does it seem like a mountain is crushing me? The horse pondered. Giddy up, Chen said as he rammed his rope into his back, and the horse shouted, sweating bullets, and it raced as fast as it could. And his pal wished him a safe journey. The horse yelled out in his head, wondering why he was being tormented. He assured himself that once he established his cultivation basis, he'll make him bleed like the Red Sea. When Chen and his horse were in the forest on their way home, he noticed withered vines, aged trees, dark crows, small bridges, and flowing water. The horse was still breathing heavily as they drove. The horse couldn't figure out why Chen seemed to be becoming heavier. The horse was becoming dizzy and exhausted, and he lamented that he just wanted to go home. Chen had gotten almost to his residence when he noticed something, he inquired if he had any visitors. Meanwhile, Qin Poshonan began coughing up blood. Yi Jing Hong was taken aback and asked brother Qin what was wrong. Qin Poshan informed him that he believes his intestines are broken. Yi Qingwu informed him, concerned, that senior was on his way over here. However, Yi Jing Hong was concerned that the master would be angry at them for revealing his identity. He warned him not to get too stirred up. And they had all seen him arrive. Yi Qingwu was the first to greet him joyfully. Qing Wu glanced at Chen Fan and recognized it was Chen, the one who took the test to become a martial artist, and she pondered how he was so handsome. Chen was still riding his horse when he inquired as to what brought them here. Yi Jing Hong said that they had come here to find him. Chen looked behind Yi Jing Hong and Yi Qing Wu and saw Qing Wu, and Chen instantly recognized her, and when Qin Yin and Qin Poshan realized this, they both leapt in fright. Qing Wu suddenly and anxiously greeted Chen, knowing that he had been rejected by the Sacred Sound Valley sect. Chen Fan welcomed her back and wondered what had brought her here. Yi Qingwu introduced her companion to Chen, saying, This is Qin Yin. And Yi Qingwu presented Chen Fan to her, informing her that Senior Chen had saved her and that she was thankful to him. Qin Poshan, Qin Yin's father, was also introduced. Hearing that, Qin Poshan chuckled. Chen was perplexed as to why this elder's face appeared ill and inquired of Qin Poshan whether he was ill. 
Shin Potion pointed to himself, unsure what to say. He was taken aback when his master addressed him as elder. He pondered whether he had said something humorous, he was nervous and didn't know what to say. Yi Jing Hong responded for Chin Potion, saying he's only fatigued from hiking the hill. He assured him that he would be all right after some rest. Chen smiled and told him that if that was the case, he should hurry and bring him inside to relax. Chen believed Chin Potion was too powerful for his daughter to be a cultivator. They left the horse behind, and the horse convinced himself that he would take advantage of that idiot mortal's lack of attention and flee. Dragon Vine entwined himself around the horse, threatening him that if he fled away, he'd hang him. The horse was taken aback when he realized it was Dragon Vine. The demonic ant turned once more and spoke in a demonic tone, stating, Looks like there's more food, well, time for dessert then. The horse yelled in surprise, understanding the ancient evil ant had arrived. The demonic ant growled, intending to devour him, and the poor horse sobbed, believing it was dead. Zhang Tiangqing Dragon Vine stopped him, informing him that the master had arrived and not to be arrogant. As he recommended him to stay or else, the threat was left dangling. Shakily, the horse inquired of Zhang Tiangqing, What on earth is going on here? But Dragon Vine didn't respond as he led the horse into the yard, and the horse grieved silently, unsure why there were such powerful beings here. He decided to simply lie down. Meanwhile, inside the house, Qin Potion glanced at Yi Jing Hong and Yi Qingwu, disappointed in both of them because Master had just poured the tea, and they were also enthralled by it. This, according to Qin Potion, was insulting to the Master. However, before he could drink, Qin Yin summoned his father and told him to swallow it quickly. Qin Potion agreed, noting her frenetic expression. He drank the tea and was surprised after taking a drink, and he wondered how. When he realized his injuries were healed, he wondered whether this was the master's way of forgiving him. Qin Yin gazed at Chen Fan, realizing that he had two thoughts, one to injure and one to defend. She believed the master's means were terrible, and she thought he was the toughest guy she'd ever met. Chen abruptly rose up and suggested that they sit for a while while he prepared dinner for everyone, and when they've finished eating, they can go home. Chin Potion was not paying attention, however, for some odd reason, he was drinking his tea like a dog. Yi Jing Hong and Yi Qingwu were reminded of the Black Hawk when he mentioned providing food for them. Chin Potion hastily jumped up and told him that there was no need, as visiting was already impolite, and how could they disturb him any longer. Both Yi Qingwu and Yi Jing Hong were speechless and unable to speak, and Yi Qingwu, Yi Jing Hong, and Qin Yin yelled in their heads, let the master cook for us, and our lives will not be cut short. Qin Yin was also stunned but not stunned enough to remain speechless. Chen agreed and inquired about Yi Jing Hong and Yi Qingwu, he then inquired about them, are they okay? Yi Jing Hong clenched his teeth and wondered if it was even possible to say no he cursed the elderly man, referring to him as that damned old Chin. He was hesitant to say anything since he knew elder Chin was correct, and it was already late, so they will undoubtedly eat his meal the next time. He felt like crying as he said this. Yi Qingwu slammed her fist on the desk, infuriated because he wanted to stay, and she was willing to do anything Chen said. She gathered herself before doing anything else, and she told him with a bright smile that they wouldn't bother him any longer this time. She didn't want to do it since tears were prickling at the corner of her eyes. Chen agreed and assured them that the next time, he'd invite everyone to supper, with a smile on his face, he said this. If he had looked behind him, he would have seen Yi Jing Hong and Yi Qingwu, who were disappointed that they wouldn't be able to taste his excellent dish, and they won't know when the next time will be. Qin Potion was merely delighted that he obtained the tea, and Master wanted them to return the next time, and both Qin Potion and Qin Yin agreed that they needed to be more cautious in the future. Chen reflected on how Yi Jing Hong had given him the jade butterfly the day before and how he should repay the courtesy. Chen returned his gaze to Yi Jing Hong and asked him to wait a moment, telling him he'd want to give him a gift. Both Yi Jing Hong and Yi Qingwu were taken aback. Chen showed him a hoe he made himself, and if he intends to utilize it, he will hand it over to him. Chen continued to smile. While he was speaking, the hoe began to emit a faint gold ray, which Chen failed to notice. Yi Jing Hong's eyes widened in surprise as he realized that this hoe surpassed an immortal grade weapon. Yi Jing Hong was unsure as he inquired if he could have this. Even as he said this, his hands were reaching for the hoe. 
Shin Potion shielded his eyes from the brightness of the Ho, muttering angrily, how did he get so lucky? Shin Yin's jaw dropped in awe at the beauty of this weapon. Chen responded, just take it. Yi Jing Hong cried, grateful for this great and powerful present, and informed him that he truly likes this Ho. Chen concluded that if a Ho like this could make him this pleased, he would offer him more in the future. Chen said goodbye by waving at them. Yi Qingwu returned his wave and assured him that they would return, and Qin Yin returned the wave. A few steps away, the elderly man was drooling, greedily staring at the weapon as he bagged Yi Jing Hong. Please let him touch the master's Ho, he swears not to steal it with only a touch. Qin Yin is attempting to calm down his father by encouraging him to relax, and Yi Jing Hong yelled at him, telling him not to even consider it. Yi Jing Hong shouted at him, calling him a moron for attempting to steal his hoe, but he also declined master's invitation to dinner. Qin Potion took a step back in surprise, not expecting Yi Jing Hong to be upset with him. And Yi Qingwu yelled back, claiming that if we had eaten the dinner soon after, we would have been allowed to advance to the next stage. Qin Potion tries to justify himself by saying, master was too generous, he couldn't help himself. Qin Yin realized that what Yi Jing Hong stated was true, a cup of tea that cleansed the soul, a painting that crosses three realms, and a stick of meat that can transform a martial artist's fate. Meanwhile, the old man was pleased for a brief period as he inquired, Yi Jing Hong, if he still had any beef skewers? Yi Jing Hong answered, saying no is this the master's attitude toward Qin Wu, Qin Yin, wondered. She hesitantly asked herself if she had a chance? Qin Potion begged Yi Jing Hong to tell him more about Chen to which Yi Jing Hong said that he would when they returned to the sect. Qin Yin inquired of her friend Yi Qingwu whether the senior had a wife. Yi Qingwu was taken aback and wondered what she had done. Yi Qingwu and the others were on their way to the Cloud Sword sect. Almost every member of the Cloud Sword sect was apprehended. And the arrogant jerk was just standing there waiting for them. The arrogant jerk smirked viciously, assuring Yi Jing Hong that he was finally returned. Yi Jing Hong was enraged when he saw Qin Peng. Yi Qingwu was enraged once more that the Cloud Sword sect is almost destroyed. Yi Jing Hong charged at the arrogant bastard, shouting at him, Your head is mine. Yi Qingwu yelled for her father, concerned that he might be wounded. The arrogant guy ignited his power, smirked darkly, and informed him he's stupid. An evil beast attacked the arrogant guy immediately after he triggered his abilities. Yi Jing Hong immediately came to a halt. The beast attacked not just Yi Jing Hong but also Yi Ching Wu, but before it could reach her, she constructed a barrier to defend herself. The arrogant bastard looked down on Yi Jing Hong and told him that since he was not his opponent, he should simply kneel and surrender. If you want to murder me, it won't be easy, Yi Jing Hong murmured. And he tossed the toothpick directly towards the horrible beast. Qin Peng yelled at him, asking whether he was crazy and how a toothpick could kill him. However, when the toothpick unleashed its entire power, his face changed, indicating that something was awry, and that's when he spotted carvings on it. He wondered if this was a top-grade weapon. The horrible beast was killed instantly when the toothpick touched it? Qin Peng was stunned, wondering how this was possible. Yi Jing Hong used the toothpick to stab Qin Peng, who also died instantly and a toothpick was returned to Yi Jing Hong. Qin Potion yelled at Brother Yi, asking him where he got the toothpick. Yi Jing Hong didn't respond, simply smirked, and rotated the toothpick in his hand. Before he could respond, he observed someone in the rear speaking to him. So, the Cloud Sword sect possessed the Dao East Hoyan's treasure. Everyone looked up, astonished to see someone releasing a great deal of power. Yi Qingwu was the first to speak up, asking, who is that? Qin Potion was nervous because just by looking at this man, he knew he was at a martial soul peak. Qin Yin was so taken aback and amazed that she wondered, was there such a strong person on Hu Hua Island? Envoy's eyes flashed brighter as he threatened them all to surrender or die. And he was holding a weapon in his hand, ready to kill them. Yi Jing Hong yelled angrily, asking if he was the man behind the beast attacks. He yelled, I'm the Cloud Sword Sect's master, and we're not the same why should I give up? And he threw the toothpick at him, attempting to kill him. But before the toothpick could reach the ambassador, he unleashed his own weapon and muttered silly. Envoy utilized a slash method to counteract the toothpick's strength. 
Yi Jinghong was surprised that Envoy carried such a powerful weapon. Qin Poshan was shocked and cried to Brother Yi, it's over, they're screwed. Yi Jinghong exclaimed loudly, it's all or nothing, and he took out the hoe that Chen had given him. Envoy slashed him with an energy blade, warning him to die. However, Yi Jinghong was stunned and asked himself, how can this hoe absorb his spiritual powers like a bottomless abyss? Yi then exclaimed loudly to Brother Qin, telling him that his spiritual energy is insufficient, lend me a hand. The energy cut was still approaching. While that was going on, Yi Jinghong, Yi Qingwu, Qin Poshan, and Qin Yin were filling the hoe's spiritual pool. When the hoe made contact with the energy blade, it quickly cracked and split apart. An envoy's eyes widened when he noticed the hoe? Unsure why they have a hoe? When Yi Jinghong and the others tossed the weapon at him, Envoy was surprised to see that it was an eternal grade weapon. Yi Jinghong yelled at him to die, no, yelled, Envoy. And before he could move, the Ho smashed into him, slicing him in half. Killing him instantly, Yi Qingwu, Yi Jinghen, and Qin Poshan collapsed on their knees, exhausted by what they had just done. While Yi Jinghong was on his knees, he stated that this was risky. Yi Qingwu responded, saying it's a good thing they possessed master's treasure. Before anyone could say anything, Qin Yin spotted the Ho returning to Yi Jinghong and was taken aback. Yi Jinghong observed the Ho next to him and agreed that they were lucky to have found the treasure. Yi Jinghong instantly hugged and kissed the Ho. He assumed Chen Fan had previously planned this for them. Yi Qingwu inquired, did he plan this? Both Qin Poshan and Qin Yin were silent. While Yi Jinghong and the others were traveling, Yi Jinghong stated that what he meant previously was that the toothpick and hoe that Master gave them were really useful in resolving the situation, and there must be a deeper significance. Qin Poshan inquired, what deep meaning? Both Yi Qingwu and Qin Yin were curious as well. Suddenly, Yi Jinghong raised the hoe and exclaimed, the Master told me to use this hoe and cultivate under the heavens, and to raise all living things. Everyone was taken aback, even though they didn't understand what he was saying, they all thought it was cool. Yi Jinghong explained that Master uses the sky and the earth as a chessboard, with all living things as pawns, and they're all engaged in a huge game of chess. They all imagined Chen as an all-powerful entity who played chess all over the planet, and Yi Jinghong informed them how lucky he was to be a chess piece for Master, and he laughed a little, content to be a pawn. Qin Poshan, Qin Yin, and Yi Qingwu were all taken aback. Yi Qingwu raised her hand like a toddler to inquire whether she might also become master's pawn. Qin Yin did the same, assuring him he was there to join them, not separate them. Qin Poshan hugged Yi Jinghong's leg as he grieved, wondering how his family was doing. Yi Jinghong sneered at him, asking if he believed being a pawn for master was easy, he told them that they were not worthy right now. Then he looked at them all and said, don't be discouraged, as long as you guys keep working hard, sooner or later, you will also be a pawn. Qin Poshan simply sobbed silently, telling himself that he was still too weak. Qin Yin was determined to do his best to follow in the master's footsteps and become his loyal pawn. Yi Qingwu was likewise certain, saying, there must be a side for me next to master. They all believed master intended for them to cultivate all living beings, beginning with the hundred beast sect. And they were all cheering for master. The horse was unhappy the next day, and he spoke again in horse language to Chen, saying, he is the crown prince of the dragon clan, and he is going to treat him like this? Chen, on the other hand, missed the horse's angry expression. And Chen was completely unaware that the horse was about to kick him. Chen's monsters and powerful beings were all aware of this, and they gazed at him viciously as they unleashed their murderous intent. The horse was now sweating profusely as he yelled for them to calm down. He was fatigued, so he stretched. Well, he was still shaking in dread. He cried somewhat, this time staying still and without doing anything weird, and while he was crying, Chen reminded him that they don't idle horses, so he could choose whether to plow or steam. The horse began to trot, and he grumbled, some dragon blows sea breeze to eat shrimp, but I came here unexpectedly. The sea is my hometown, and I want to go home to mom. He pushed even harder, and as he did so, he became aware of the chi. And he turned around to see the Taoist mark on the flowers and the Taoist mark on the plower, and he thought how cozy it was. 
The horse did something I didn't want to discuss since the horse believed that the Taoist mark on this power was mending my ailments and restoring vigor. Look at the flush on its cheeks if you don't comprehend what I'm saying. Chen was taken aback and wondered if this horse was in heat, and why is this the case? Chen was taken aback and wondered if the horse had previously been a cow. He noticed that the horse was racing quicker than a hungry lion. While the horse was going, it heard what Chen was saying, and he replied, nothing can compare to me in plowing the land, cow or whatever. Chen pondered, could it be that arable land is its favorite? And thought to himself, it's a shame it can't be ridden. The horse objected, claiming that he is not thin and that he has meat on his bones. The horse came to a halt and stated that I needed to gain weight, and even if I make a mistake while munching grass, I'll stay here to plow the fields, and he began to nibble the grass. When Chen saw this, he grinned and told himself that he should find a way to thank Da Zhuang for gifting him this horse. When the horse ate the grass, he was taken aback to discover that the flavor was spiritual energy. In his mind, he said, this energy is ten times stronger than bejeweled nectar, and this is everlasting grass. While everything was going on, Xiao Bai approached Chen and barked, and he realized why Xiao Bai was barking and asked, visitors again? He inquired. Chen headed to see those people, but before he left, he told his tiny horse to plow the field because he'd repay him with green grass tonight. The shiny horse's eyes opened as he wondered what the green grass was all about. The horse grew more motivated when he realized he needed to plow the field, and he needs to show his master that no one can plow the fields like him, a dragon. The horse had that wild look and announced loudly that as an animal, I would now be a beast that plows the fields. He yelled greedily, it's all mine, don't take it. The phoenix's eyes widened as it sweated in shock, wondering if this horse was insane. Chen was taken aback when he realized it was them again. Everyone was delighted to see him, but Yi Jing Hong abruptly inquired if his unexpected arrival had troubled him. Chen simply replied that he had nothing to do today other than plow the fields, so it was fine. Yi Jing Hong assumed the master's meaning for cultivating had to be nurturing the skies and all living beings. Yi Jing Hong was relieved that he had guessed correctly. Qin Yin was in awe of Chen and thought, Master is amazing. Qin Potion was astounded as well since he had assumed he would become a pawn for Master and assist him in plowing the field. Chen then looked about at the others and wondered why the four had come and if something was amiss. Yi Jing Hong bowed and told him the Ho he gave him a few days earlier was excellent, so he came here to express his gratitude. Chen replied with a smile, telling him it was just a Ho. There is no need to express gratitude. Elder Yi and his daughter are etiquette experts, and they are far too kind, Chen pondered. And he pictured himself doing something he felt would be ideal with Yi Qingwu. Yi Qingwu informed him that he had come across a rabbit and asked if he wanted to see it. Chen immediately expressed his desire to do so. Yi Jinghong grinned, thinking to himself, how could Master know that this rabbit is an old divine beast descended from the psychic jade rabbit's bloodline? What Yi Jinghong and Yi Qingwu didn't realize was that Chen was planning how to grill the rabbit's head and thinking about how wonderful it would be. Yi Qingwu thought to herself, what a cute rabbit, who wouldn't like it? Chen informed them that he was about to bring back some little animals to grow, but they instead gave him one, to which he replied, Thank you, Elder Yi. Chen touched its head and felt his fur, thinking how soft his fur was and how he might fashion a glove out of it. Yi Qingwu assured Chen that this rabbit is very docile and will not flee. Yi Jinghong's eyes widened as he heard this, wondering whether it meant that if their love is solid, he will not betray. Meanwhile, Chen gently placed the bunny on the ground. The rabbit sighed with relief because headpats felt so lovely. Chen and the others moved away, leaving the bunny to relax. Xiao Bai went up to the bunny. Xiao Bai said, I smell something good to eat, and began to drool. The rabbit jumped in terror and yelled at Xiao Bai not to approach him. Dragon vine wrapped around him, warning the rabbit to be careful. What the hell is this? exclaimed the rabbit. The celestial tree laughed and said, I'm such a clown. The heavenly tree's eyes twinkled as he watched the rabbit quiver in fright. And the rabbit's jaw dropped as he realized there was such a large ant. And the ant grinned as he looked at the rabbit, saying, here comes another rival. As it questioned himself, the poor rabbit's mind ultimately snapped. What exactly am I? What am I doing? He mentally questioned them if he didn't meddle with any of them. 
The rabbit just lay there on the ground, quivering in dread. Chen cooked a supper in the rear of the kitchen and informed them that since they had arrived, what about staying for dinner? All of them were looking at the ingredients Chen was holding while he was saying this. Yi Qingwu and Qin Yin requested Chen's assistance in washing the ingredients, they were both enthusiastic and eager to assist. But before Chen could say anything, the ingredients were removed from him, leaving him stunned and perplexed at what had just transpired. Qin Potion was determined, declaring that he would prepare the ingredients. Yi Jinghong was also resolute, as he told him that he would prepare the fire while holding wood. Chen smiled and thought, what an unsophisticated family. Chen warned Elder Qin that the knife was quite sharp and that he should proceed with caution. Meanwhile, Qin Potion was staring at the sword in awe, realizing that it was the famous weapon. Chen told Yi Jinghong that the lighter he was holding was the lighter. All he has to do is press it, and there will be fire. Yi Jinghong then pressed it. In fact, fire appeared, shocking both of them, especially Yi Jinghong, who thought it was a hidden samadhi flame capable of bolting the sea. They both remained silent as they felt the warmth of the fire. Chen was wide-eyed from the strangeness that was unfolding in front of him. Despite the fact that the warriors on the Shenwu continent are running around, they are still eternal gods according to Earth's technology. Both Yi Jinghong and Qin Yin were taken aback by the fact that this water was 1,000 times purer than the terrified spring water. A single stride on the ocean is worth one month of heart cruises. When Yi Qingwu and Qin Yin touched the water, they felt the fresh, cool sweetness of the water, and the powerful spiritual force. While this was going on, Chen pretended to cough and apologized for disturbing them. Both Yi Qingwu and Qin Yin were concerned that Senior might become enraged. Chen shook his head in frustration because he knew there were plenty of people on the Shenwu continent who could mess around. Chen gently mumbled that he would bring tea to the others. Half an hour later, Chen was cooking like a professional chef, with a rich scent in the air and a faint golden glow from the pan, and Yi Qingwu handed her the ingredients she had brought. Yi Qingwu and Qin Yin were astounded by such a divine look. Chen was only concerned with his cooking. The supper was almost ready, and Yi Jinghong and the others could smell it. Qingwu thought to herself, one bite is enough for a lifetime. The supper had been made and was on the table. Chen also invited them to taste his cooking. Everyone was staring at the food in wonder, they were drooling somewhat. Chen groaned, a little disappointed, as he told them not to say anything if they didn't like it, and he sat down to eat. When he looked up, he was astounded to find Yi Qingwu and the others devouring his food like hungry dogs. They began to level up while eating, as their power got stronger and stronger. Chen sobbed quietly as all of the food on the table vanished. Qin Yin told him that this dish is incredibly tasty. Chen thought such a poor family could find such a tasty vegetable dish? He asked if they wanted to stay for a while longer. Yi Qingwu told him there was no need, stating, how could we take advantage of your generosity? She then told him that she'll go wash the dishes. Qin Yin told him she'll assist her. Chen sighed in his mind, thinking that, as expected, martial artists would not owe favor so lightly. Yi Qingwu finished washing the dishes a few minutes later and Yi Qingwu informed him that he was not required to send them out. Qin Yin agreed, saying they had already bothered him enough today. Qin Potion was looking at the blade with grief as he wanted to grab it, and Chen was wide-eyed at this pitiful sight, and Yi Jinghong asked him angrily, what are you doing? Chen sweated and informed him that because he likes the knife so much, he'll give it to Qin Potion. Qin Potion was crying and surprised that Chen was giving him the blade. Qin Potion hurriedly seized the blade and exclaimed loudly, I'm touched, and I'll never forget your kindness. Chen stepped back a little and advised him not to get too excited as long as he was content. Chen felt that since Qin Yin and Yi Qingwu had given him a bunny, he should return the favor. Chen smiled shyly and offered them two handkerchiefs, which Qin Yin and Yi Qingwu looked at with interest, and Chen told them that these two handkerchiefs were for them. Yi Qingwu thought to herself, I've heard mortals give handkerchiefs to their loved pawns to express their affection, and Qin Yin agreed as Chen handed those handkerchief his own things. And Yi Qingwu assumed Chen was expressing his interest in her, and she should be more straightforward. And Qin Yin surmised, perhaps master likes me, and she reasoned that as long as she had a chance, she would not give up. Yi Qingwu thanked him first, explaining that she was merely lacking a handkerchief. 
Chin Yin told him that this handkerchief is lovely, and she is overjoyed. One hour later, Chen was standing within the courtyard, telling himself that he was looking at those two, and how they stared at the handkerchiefs, and how pathetic it was that they become martial artists but didn't even have a handkerchief. And the rabbit began to stir inside the courtyard. The rabbit opened its eyes and was instantly terrified when it saw Chen approaching her. And it wailed as it leapt around, screaming that it needed to get out of here. And the rabbit slammed on Chen's leg right away, screaming that it couldn't stay here any longer, the big guys will eat me, it stated. But Chen caught it before it could flee, and it panicked, crying, I don't want to be popular. When Chen took it, he stared it in the eyes and said, I'm just so hungry to still be hungry. What about some spicy stir-fried rabbit with rice? The rabbit merely looked at him, weeping, in sorrow. Chen questioned the rabbit, Do you have any last words, little bunny? The rabbit screamed as it begged its owner to let him go because he was just an innocent bunny. Chen wondered if this bunny would plead for mercy. The rabbit suddenly grabbed his hand and rested his head on it. And the bunny gave him the cutest look it could muster. Chen was surprised since he didn't understand why it had suddenly become so adorable. He tried to avoid the sweetness, but in the end, he decided to help the bunny. Then Chen told her that the next time she attempts to kill herself, he won't help her. The bunny looked at the bandage with interest. Chen began bandaging the rabbit, and the bunny gazed at him in awe that her injuries were healed. Chen patted its head and walked away. The rabbit was still grieving, but this time, it was happy because its master had healed her. Chen decided to see how the skinny horse was doing. He didn't notice the bunny blazing gold as he walked away. Mom. Did your divine spirit bless me with meeting master, the rabbit wondered? And she transformed in a burst of smoke, exclaiming, Mom, I miss you. Chen was stunned when he went outside to see how the skinny horse was doing. Chen thought this was crazy, yelling with surprise that more than 100 acres of land had been plowed? The horse merely lay there, fatigued and in agony, his stomach distended, telling himself that he must prove to his master that he can not only plow the fields, but also use his fat as a mountain. He began to chew the grass again, ready to prove himself to the master. Chen was once again amazed that he was still eating. Chen directed Xiao Bai to his medical kit. The holy phoenix was simply circling. He also yawned. Chen opened the horse's mouth and poured an unknown liquid into it. Meanwhile, Xiao Bai was staring at the horse, thinking to himself that the horse was now a beast in charge of plowing the field for master, but he still wanted to be a mountain. He informed him that he was seeking trouble. The horse abruptly stood up and yelled, Nay! It smells, yelled the horse. And part of the grass waste in his stomach exited his body from the back. And I don't need to tell you where from the back because you already know. In any case, the horse pondered why this was happening to him. The horse collapsed because he was exhausted and sweating bullets. It inquired once more, why can't he be the master's mountain? Xiao Bai advised him that those who cross their boundaries will be met with the butcher's knife the next time and that he should always remember who he is, he stated with a grim expression. The horse then inquired as to his current situation. Xiao Bai closed his eyes and looked serious. He opened his eyes and said passively, I am the master's dog. The horse was stunned, and he resolved to become a master's bird and beast. Yi Qingwu and Qin Yin were astounded the next day in the Cloud Sword sect as they looked at the blade that Qin Potion was holding. Qin Potion told him seriously that he is now certified because an expert gave him a kitchen knife. Yi Jinghong groaned and explained that since Chen has the heart to cultivate a land, everything that grew in the land was naturally vegetables in the field. Hearing what Yi Jinghong said, Qin Potion gazed at him with astonishment and uncertainty. Yi Jinghong went on to explain that Chen had given him a kitchen knife and that he hoped to become a pioneer in chopping everything. Yi Qingwu examined the handkerchief and inquired of her father what an expert meant by giving her a handkerchief. Yi Jinghong responded by explaining that the handkerchief is embroidered with sunset radiance, a metaphor for Taoist Hoian. He told her that Chen wanted them to find the location of the Taoist Hoian's death and recover the treasure he left behind. Yi Qingwu grew unhappy, and she inquired as to what type of existence is expert, who gazes up at the treasure left by the Taoist Hoian. Hearing that, Qin Yin gave her a serious look. Yi Jinghong yelled angrily at her, fool. Chen, of course, dislikes Taoist Hoian wealth, but this is a test for you. Hearing this, Yi Qingwu was stunned and surprised. 
Yi Jinghong informed her that if she couldn't accomplish it, she wasn't fit to be an expert pawn. Yi Qingwu said with resolve, adding that in order to become an expert's pawn, she will undoubtedly identify the location where the Taoist Hoyan dies and obtain the treasure. Yi Jinghong nodded and said, very good. Qin Yin had no idea what the purpose of the handkerchief that the expert had given her was, but she guessed it was to play music. Her handkerchief bore a musical sign, and she began to imagine herself and Chen holding hands and seeing each other in the eyes. Qin Yin blushed profusely at what she had envisioned. Someone opened the door and bowed, and she screamed in fear, Patriarch, as she didn't expect the sudden visit. The Patriarch recently informed Yi Jinghong that the third princess will come on Yuha Island in three days and that they are cordially invited to meet her. Yi Jinghong didn't even glance at the Patriarch when he told him that he didn't have time to tell the princess. The Patriarch was stunned and amazed and responded, Yes, sir. Qin Yin was worried as she told him the third princess is very powerful, and it isn't right to reject them. Yi Qingwu agreed, telling him that she is the Empress's legitimate daughter, is highly favored by the Emperor, and that they must give her face. Yi Jinghong looked at nothing and said useless thing, in rage. Yi Jinghong took out his hoe and said that they were now Chen's pawns and that we represented an expert face outside. And not to mention she's just a princess, even if the emperor arrives, she is not qualified to meet them, if you have any complaints. Zhang He immediately exclaimed, ask this hoe of mine first, Qin Potion exclaimed as well, and said, and my kitchen knife as well. Yi Qingwu and Qin Yin exchanged glances and agreed that those two old men are high. Meanwhile, back in Chen's backyard, Chen grumbled about his stinky horse. Chen was wandering around his yard when he observed a figure on the ground. He approached the figure to see who it was, and he was shocked to see the person. He noticed a tiny girl with bruises and wondered, where did this kid come from? Chen was cleaning the bunny's girl's face, and as he was doing so, he wondered who had committed this devious, terrible attack. The girl, or rabbit, as we call her, was still in pain. Chen sobbed and closed his eyes. His tears dropped on the little girl's hand while he was crying, and her hand healed instantaneously. When she opened her eyes, she noticed Chen crying. She wondered if he was sad because of her. She remembered what Xiao Bai said to her as he grinned and stated, Master pretended to be immortal in order to experience mortal joy and sorrow. He instructed her to pose as a mistreated child in order for her master to feel pity. In such case, master might be willing to accept her. She clenched her hand, wondering how her master could not notice she was acting and she believed Chen was training his Tao mind with her. She chided herself, stating that even if my acting abilities were at their pinnacle, she couldn't even comfort master. She closed her eyes and fell asleep, and her final thought was I'm still too young. Chen turned around, still sobbing. He brushed away his tears, thinking to himself, it's been a long time since I've cried like this. And seeing her reminds me of my earthly sister, he stated. And Chen was curious about how her sister was doing on earth. The girl opened her eyes after Chen left and shut the door, having heard what he said. And she cut herself short and questioned herself, sister? And she pondered if the master had a sister on earth. Where is earth? She wondered to herself. Chen stood outdoors, sadly glancing at his reflection. And he overheard the girl inquire, did you save me? Chen turned around to face her, and she thanked him. Chen caressed her head, pleased that she was awake and he inquired as to whether she was still in discomfort. She smiled brightly and informed him there was no pain, then added thank you Moss before correcting herself and said brother instead of master. Chen knelt down to her level, smiled at her, and asked what her name was, and how did she end up by herself here? He questioned. She introduced herself as Xiaoqi and told him sheepishly how she was kidnapped and sold to human traffickers in Qingxi town and how she escaped at night when they weren't looking. She kept lying, telling him she ran and ran until she saw a home on the mountain and went towards it, at which point she fainted. Chen gazed at her sadly and inquired about her family. She reacted by telling him that her mother had died and that she had never seen her father, and she started crying. Chen sympathized with her and lamented the fact that she was also alone in this world. And Xiaoqi was shivering with the desire to cry. Chen had an idea and smiled as he proposed to Xiaoqi that if she didn't have any other relatives who could care for her, she could stay home and be his little sister from now on. Xiaoqi was astonished and wondered if she had succeeded. She eagerly hugged Chen and said, 
Shaoqi was overjoyed that she now has a brother. And declared that no one would try to bully her again. If you're wondering, she's referring to Chen Fan's pets and powerful beings who are bullying her. Chen advised her to wait while he went to acquire some fabric to sew her new clothes. Chen began to sew new outfits for her. His powers as a god of embroidery and god of tailoring triggered when he was making her garments, and once again, he didn't realize his power while he was producing the clothes. Shaoqi was stunned and asked herself, do you make clothes like this? As she was watching Chen's power, Chen smiled and handed her the clothing, instructing her to try them on. And he warned her not to despise his handiwork. The clothing were stunning, they sparkled and were beautifully constructed. When she held the clothing, Shaoqi was taken aback. And she thought, Master, even though you're pretending, thank you, for creating the most powerful priceless garments in the world. They were still shining with power after she had put on the clothes and sneakers. She was astounded because she had never seen these shoes before, and Chen informed her that they were known as sneakers. And how to wear it on her feet, and she recognized the garments will always have an aura to her body, which she doesn't have to cultivate. Chen inquired as to whether she liked them. Shaoqi looked up at him and said, yes. She then told him that he was the first person other than her mother to make clothes for her. Chen gazed at her with sadness, thinking that Shaoqi must have suffered greatly while being trafficked, and how new clothing made her feel this way. Chen made a mental note to be extra friendly to her in the future. Xiao Bai was talking to the horse in the backyard, telling him that farming animals want to be mounted and that he doesn't know his role. As he requested Brother Bai to enlighten him, the horse was sweating bullets. Xiao Bai then smiled arrogantly and said to him, I'm a pet dog, the golden crow is a funny bird, Zhang Tianqing is a tree, the dragon vine is swings, and the ancient demonic ant is a pest. While saying this, he gradually released his power. The ant heard what Xiao Bai said and became upset, telling him he was not a pest, and he can assist master in cultivating. Xiao Bai glanced down on the ant, his arrogant smirk remaining on his face, and he replied, saying he was an ant, and how could he possibly assist master in cultivating the land. The slender horse stared at the ant, who considered it. When he sprinkled the dragon dung around it, he had an epiphany and told Xiao Bai that it was the best fertilizer. While holding that golden ball, he exclaimed, this land will definitely level up. Xiao Bai believes master disguised to be immortal. This land is the most important thing. I can't let this ancient demonic ant take credit for it, Xiao Bai reasoned. Xiao Bai carried the golden ball as well, determined not to let the ant take credit for it. The ant then yelled at Xiao Bai, he has no martial ethics, and you're taking my rightful credit, he stated. Xiao Bai simply raced away, asking him to stop talking and to test who could go faster. The horse attempted to stand, but he was in excruciating pain. But the bird stopped him before he could. As he attacked him and he was unable to get up, the bird advised him that all he needed to do was eat and spit and not worry about anything else. The horse shouted in agony and cursed the old man. While this was going on, Chen and Shaoqi were walking towards them in the backyard. While they were approaching, Xiao Bai and Xia Wu bullied the skinny horse, ordering him to eat first, then crap. The horse merely sobbed, telling them that all he wanted to do was help fertilize the earth. Chen was taken aback when he saw what Xiao Bai and Xia Wu were up to. He firmly warned them not to bully the thin horse. Xiao Qi was stunned, but for a different reason. The horse was not a horse, but a dragon. She reminded herself that she needed to get used to these kinds of things at master's house sooner rather than later. Xiao Bai and Xia Wu turned to face their master, still enraged at the skinny horse. But that was a poor idea, since Chen kicked them both hard and told them to fuck off because they had shit on their tongues. The horse chuckled joyfully because he thought they deserved it. The slender horse asked Shaoqi, how come another rabbit is eating grass? In horse language, the horse said. Shaoqi responded, saying she was eating a fantastic supper prepared by master himself. Chen was surprised once more when he questioned Xiao Bai if it was his idea to use horse manure as fertilizer. Xiao Bai didn't say anything, simply waved his tail and smiled, happy to see his master. Meanwhile, the ant squealed and shouted at Xiao Bai that he came up with the notion of spreading dung, and he's the biggest contributor. It came in front of Chen while angry, and he was stunned and shocked, exclaiming, holy crap, what a big ant. And he tried to stump on it. When the ant noticed this, he exclaimed, why? 
as he positioned himself to protect himself from the stump, and he was terrified as he realized he was finished. Meanwhile, the unfortunate rabbit pondered what would have occurred if Chen had actually tried to kill her, and Chen became a new person in her imagination. The rabbits were cute, Crazy Chen said. And Crazy Chen smirked evilly, telling himself that he will create the most delicious spicy rabbit, and she watched herself slain in our own imagination. She knelt down, sobbing, and yelled at Chen to stop, and he did so instantly. And he questioned her, what's the matter? With concern in his eyes. Chen cried out to her Shaochi, but she didn't respond, instead she shouted, thank you for saving my life. Chen approached her again and asked her what was wrong with her. Shaochi simply stared at him, weeping. And she reasoned in her head that she couldn't admit she was terrified of him because he'd believe she was tearing him apart. So I can see why she's terrified of Chen. After all, Chen intended to eat her in bunny form. Shaochi was still terrified, but it didn't stop her from responding, telling him, that this ant appears to be lost, poor thing its parents must be looking for it as well, Shaochi said. Chen became serious and contemplated she must miss her family, and he told himself that he would assist her in apprehending and punishing the traffickers harshly. Chen wiped her tears and begged her not to cry since this is now her home and she is now his family. Shaochi sobbed even more, telling him she would not cry. And now she's her brother. She stated a few days later, Chen and Shaochi were walking together when Shaochi began her revenge plan, telling Chen she was frightened of dogs while pointing to Xiao Bai. Hearing this, Xiao Bai was wide-eyed since he didn't understand why she was acting this way. Chen simply smiled, oblivious to Xiao Bai's horrified expression, assuring her not to worry because Xiao Bai is obedient. Shaochi executed another plan, telling Chen that the small feather is really beautiful, and it would be fun to make a shuttlecock. What it implies is that a shuttlecock is a high drag projectile that is used in badminton. It is made of feathers or plastic and has an open conical shape. This explanation is for people who didn't know what it was like me. In any case, Sha Wu was wide eyed as well, and Shaochi simply smirked evilly. As his feathers were gone, Shaochi cheerfully told her brother that she was tired and wanted to swing. Chen consented and promised her that he would push her. When Dragon Vine heard this, he, too, was stunned and wide-eyed. The sad bird gazed up into the sky, still grieving, knowing he couldn't fly until his feathers grew back. Chen told Shaochi that they should leave because it was time for dinner. Shaochi laughed, but not at Chen, but at the pets and other powerful beings. She then insulted them with an arrogant sneer, telling them they could only be pets, unlike her, who could be Gigi's sister. Xiao Bai became upset as he began to regret training her how to act and allowing Master to take her in at first, and now she is a mess, Xiao Bai exclaimed loudly. When the other beasts, including the skinny horse, heard this, they were enraged. When Xiao Bai realized what he'd done, he began to sweat bullets, and they all released their deadly intent. They all went on him and beat him up, yelling that he was the one who taught her. In the Cloud Sword sect, it is daytime. When the patriarch, the third princess, arrived on Yuha Island and saw that they had not gone to meet her, she became enraged and hurried to the Cloud Sword sect. The attendants kneel and inform the patriarch Yi Jing Hong that the fifth prince of the Zhuao kingdom wishes to see him. Yi Jing Hong was perplexed as to why the fifth prince of Zhuao kingdom was present. Yi Jing Hong murmured to himself that Yuha Island is located at the crossroads of the Chilling and Zhuao kingdoms. The two kingdoms frequently clash. Yi Jing Hong reasoned to himself that he couldn't possibly be considering annexing Yuha Island. He went on to say, unsure if this was the right choice. While he was contemplating his next move, an unknown Qi materialized behind him. Another arrogant bastard arrived, and the purple head person in the back complained loudly about how the patriarch Yi Jing Hong is so arrogant, and how dare he delay greeting his prince. Qi Xinghai, the malevolent demon, was represented by the purple head person. And the fifth prince Liang Kong told Qi Xinghai angrily that he had slaughtered the people of the Zhuao kingdom and that it was time to explain. Yi Jing Hong became serious and inquired as to if they were the ones behind the Hundred Beast sect. Liang Kong smirked and told him that the Hundred Beast sect is a strength that the Zhuao kingdom has been building for many years, and now that the Cloud Sword sect has destroyed it, they must pay the price, he stated. Qi Xinghai the evil demon told the fifth prince that he'd take care of this old man. Liang Kong granted him permission, 
Qi Xinghai unleashed his strength, and Yi Jinghong stated calmly that it was as expected of one of the top ten experts of the Zhuao Kingdom, the famed evil demon of the Donghai Sea Archipelago, Qi Xinghai. Before Yi Jinghong could respond, someone exclaimed, Bullshit! Qi Xinghai, the evil demon, come out and engaged in combat with me, Qin Poshan said. And then, out of nowhere, the renowned blade appeared from Qi Xinghai's back, and he dodged in surprise, wondering who had struck him. But before Qi Xinghai could fully turn, Qin Poshan kicked him in the face and yelled that with a kitchen knife in hand, he could slash the entire planet with blood and lightning. And you're referring to your grandfather, Qin Poshan. Xinghai just spit out blood as he flew back from the strong kick, in excruciating pain. Meanwhile, Yi Jinghong is upset because Qin Poshan stole his thunder. Outside the Cloud Sword sect, the third princess Zhao Lingzi was standing in front of the sect, irritated that she had arrived outside the sect and that Yi Jinghong had yet to come out to greet her. The woman who arrived with the third princess informed her that the Cloud Sword sect's uprising appears to be true. Yin Shui, the princess's companion, pleaded with her to let her go up the mountain and clean up the Chilling Kingdom sect. Before Zhao Lingzi, the third princess, could respond, her eyes widened as she noticed something approaching them. And someone yelled, watch out, and both the princess and Yin Shui move as rapidly to the side as they can. They were amazed and shocked to see someone crumple on the ground. When the dust cleared, they saw the wicked demon Qi Xinghai bloodied and injured, with a kitchen knife pointing at him, and its aura is spreading around the area. Both of them were surprised, Zhao Lingzi and Yin Shui, to discover this is a spirit weapon. Yi Jinghong and Qin Poshan leapt from the Falling Cloud Sword sect compound. Isn't this Senior Yin and the Princess? Yi Jinghong inquired of Qin Poshan. When Qin Poshan did not respond, Yi Jinghong asked Zhao Lingzi if she was surprised. Zhao Lingzi closed her eyes and began to consider the hoe and kitchen knife. What kind of decent weaponry is this? She asked herself. Before she could say anything else, Yi Jinghong interrupted, saying, I'm afraid you will be disappointed if you came here for Taoist Huoyun's treasure, said Yi Jinghong. Lingzi Zhao I asked him what he meant. Qin Poshan and Yi Jinghong posed, and Qin Poshan's weapon's aura was visible, and Yi Jinghong's weapon as well. And Yi Jinghong replied to her, saying that they didn't obtain the wealth of Taoist Huoyun at all, but that they had joined a master as his students, he stated. This weapon was also handed to me by master, he said as he showed her the hoe. Her eyes widened in surprise as she realized it was a present, and she realized that this is a fantastic opportunity. Yi Jinghong cocked an eyebrow, curious about what the princess was up to. And she humbly bowed and said, Patriarch Yi Jinghong, please introduce me to the master. She added, and I will repay you for your kindness today. Meanwhile, a shopkeeper in Qingxi town was advertising his freshly made hot buns. While this was going on, the old man who was afraid of Chen was flying around looking for another host, and he thought to himself that he never anticipated to meet a powerful hermit immortal, and he imagined how he fled terrified of Chen. And if I hadn't gotten away quickly enough, I'm afraid I'd have gone insane, he thought to himself. A child was joyfully eating his luscious apples while he was pondering this. And the old man spotted the kid and looked at him more closely, thinking to himself that he should take advantage of the old host's absence and find a new acceptable host. Otherwise, I won't be able to survive three days in this soul state. However, the old guy sensed something and looked around, sensing strong chi nearby. And he saw golden chi, his eyes widened in surprise. He approached to take a closer look and was shocked that a normal mortal had such powerful blood veins. Meanwhile, Zheng was preoccupied with sharpening his knife as there was a golden aura covering his body. The evil ghost grinned evilly and stated that the body would undoubtedly be superior to the one from the past. Oh no, we've got another Orochimaru on our hands. Chen, please save us all. The evil spirit laughed as he soared as fast as he could towards him, excited to take over his body. At that moment, Chen appeared, crying out Da Zhuang and carrying two pots, and the elderly man came to a halt, his eyes bulging in horror as he exclaimed, why is it him again? Meanwhile, Da Zhuang was overjoyed to see Chen and smiled brightly, and Chen smiled back as he handed him the two pots. The old man yelled and attempted to flee, but he was distracted by something in front of him. Chen went on to say that he wanted to ask him for a favor, and that pots of booze would be his. 
Da Zhuang stared at the pots, wide-eyed. He praised him, adding that Senior Chen is very nice, Da Zhuang informed him that if he needed anything, he should just ask. Da Zhuang was overjoyed when he told him that Mr. Chen's difficulties were also his problems. The old man didn't notice when he entered an unknown body before he could stop himself. The old man slowly opened his eyes after hearing Chen tell Zheng that a bunch of traffickers had arrived in Qingxi town. And Chen requested assistance in his investigation. Of course, catching them would be ideal, Chen added. Zheng agreed and assured him that he could count on him, Chen thanked him with a smile. Chen and Zheng approached the animal they were staring at. What are you doing? Chen inquired, intrigued. Zheng responded, informing him that he had arrived at the proper time. He told him he was about to kill Da Shan. Chen was taken aback when he told him that Da Shan had been with him for so long. He inquired as to why he wished to murder it. The old man was astounded that the emperor had taken over the alpaca. If anyone is interested, the emperor is the old man. Zhang responded to Chen's question by saying that it wasn't because it was sick. It just seemed unpleasant, so why not kill and eat it to alleviate its suffering? He stated. Chen and Zheng heard a strange animal sounds from it, as he was shrieking. He wasn't shrieking, but he was shouting at them that he wasn't an alpaca. He is a superb medical emperor. Allow me to leave. He said this while panicking a little because he was tied up. Zhang stared at the alpaca with sadness, saying, I'll give you a quick death. As he cried, the alpaca yelled in his peculiar animal voice. He wasn't screaming this time, but he was shouting in horror, I'm going to get killed. Zhang was intrigued when he observed Chen open its eye to gaze at something, and the elderly man was astounded because he had no idea what was going on. Chen employed one of his abilities as the god of veterinary medicine. After a minute or so of checking to see if the alpaca was unwell, he smiled and told Zhang it wasn't. Could I have been wrong? Zhang asked, rubbing the back of his head in embarrassment. Chen smiled and advised him to let it go and that he'd look into it. The old man was overjoyed as he called out, Thank you, senior, for saving me. Please accept me, he said in an animal language. He also bowed repeatedly. Zhang was taken aback and perplexed, that it is grateful to him for sparing its life. Chen was stunned and astonished, and he wondered if this Da Shan didn't realize it didn't have to be spirited after founding a nation? Chen is implying that the alpaca does not have to be happy after not dying. Zhang grinned and said that he should take it with him. Chen's sweat dropped, and he eye smiled, informing him that he came down the mountain looking for a beast to ride, and that if he brought it back, it would be useless. Da Shan the alpaca gently bit him, hoping not to damage him but to get him to pay attention to him, and he did so as he gazed at him. He was shocked when he saw Da Shan resolved to be his mount. Senior Chen was told by Da Shan to look at him, and he's a better mount than the average one, he stated proudly. Zhang then advised him that as long as Da Shan grows strong, riding it will be no difficulty. Chen approached it and caressed his head, and Da Shan smiled happily, and Chen pondered about it and observed that it looked robust, but he was still anxious, wondering if mounting an alpaca would be unsteady. Da Shan sat down to allow Chen to climb the alpaca. And Da Shan talked cheerfully, encouraging Chen to hurry up and not to feel sorry for him because he was an alpaca, he spoke in alpaca language. Zhang turned to Chen and said, you see. Da Shan noticed you needed a ride and sat down. Chen accepted with a smile, telling him he'd keep Da Shan and bring two bottles of wine the next time. Da Shan returned 30 minutes later, and Chen was riding it. Chen was just delighted that he achieved a flawless mount since the alpaca's head was held high as he walked so nicely. A girl from afar was taken aback and in wonder when she noticed how lovely and beautiful this alpaca is. The skinny child approached Chen Fan and exclaimed, Big brother, you're awesome. Your alpaca appears to be large and strong. Can I get on it? She inquired. This was Fang Ling from the Black Cloud sect. Alpaca looked at her, irritated that she sought to ride him. Da Shan reasoned that only the senior could ride him. Chen was shocked, and he thought the little girl was cute. Da Shan felt even angrier when he learned that his master was going to let her ride him, and he wondered if his master was going to desert him. The little girl was overjoyed when Chen consented to let her ride Da Shan. A Black Cloud sect member approached and insulted Chen, wondering what was so special about this mount. Feng Ling had already climbed the alpaca, 
and the mystery ladies had told her that there are tens of thousands of amazing mounts to choose from, and she had chosen that. Chen was furious with her, questioning whether warriors believe they are amazing, that they are free to do whatever they want. The haughty lady crossed her arms. She was Lu Suyan of the Black Cloud sect, but despite her beauty, her initial impression was bad, so I'm going to call her the arrogant woman for now until she redeems herself. Anyway, Feng Ling replied cheerfully, informing her that the trip in the sect is fantastic, but not as much fun as this alpaca. Arrogant women agreed with her that alpacas were the most entertaining to play with, and she tossed a jade at Chen. Chen took the jade, and the arrogant woman told him that she wanted to buy the alpaca. This is why I refer to her as the arrogant woman. I mean, she just gave Chen one of the cheapest jades to buy Da Shan, truly the only alpaca that can genuinely carry Chen on its back without tiring like the skinny horse. Chen is never going to give it to her. Chen scrutinized the jade with a bored expression on his face after receiving it, and he realized that this broken jade isn't as good as the one Elder Yi, Yi Jing Hong gave him. And he believed it was a piece of garbage, and they wanted to acquire Da Shan? Chen spoke up, informing her that the alpaca was his. When the arrogant woman, Lu Suyan, heard this, she narrowed her eyes in rage since she was refused to buy the alpaca with her piece of junk like that. The woman stared at him angrily Chen laughed and asked, are you feeling meek? And how appropriate for her. While Chan smiled on the outside, he was infuriated within, shouting to himself that in this world, power is appreciated, and I must suffer it, he thought. Feng Ling and the haughty woman went with Chen's alpaca while he was still upset. Chen clenched his teeth, furious that they had taken his alpaca. Chen thought to himself, I just got that mount. Meanwhile, a fire technique was growing in the Cloud Sword sect and was ready to be unleashed somewhere. Someone did just that when he used the fire technique in the mountain. That flame shocked Yi Jing Hong, but before he could say anything else, the technique impacted the mountain. Yi Jing Hong and Yi Qingwu were stunned when they realized the treasure of Taoist Huoyan had been discovered. Yi Jing Hong became serious as he added that all the warriors' eyes are on the treasure of Taoist Huoyan, and it appears that there would be a severe battle. Yi Qingwu sighed and looked down at her handkerchief unsure whether she would be able to fulfill the duty assigned to her by the master. The princess, Zhao Lingzi, assured Yi Jing Hong that the younger generation will assist, and Zhao Lingzi begged Yi Jing Hong to please inform master of what transpired today. Yi Jing Hong responded by saying that there will inevitably be several crises and that she is unsure she can accomplish so much. Zhao Lingzi grinned, thinking Yi Jing Hong is overly cautious, and she wondered if the Taoist Huoyun's treasure was only within arm's reach with the assistance of Senior? I believe Zhao Lingzi is attempting to exploit Chen for her own gain. She began to cough up blood and cursed as she held her chest in pain. And someone hovering in the air unleashed a tremendous amount of force. Everyone looked up to see who it was, and Zhao Lingzi spoke first, stating how surprising it was for our attack to have had no effect on that person, Yin Shui clutched her weapon. Yi Jing Hong answered by telling her that they couldn't call for help from the elders, and that when the seniors arrived, he would question Chen about why they were fighting over such a minor treasure. I am Huang Xiao from the Black Cloud sect, he continued, and, Huoyan stole my sect's treasure called the Cicada's Wing, and I have come to retrieve it back. This was the sect head of Huang Xiao Black Cloud. And Huang Xiao threatened them, saying that if they retreated, they would perish. Yin Shui was taken aback when she realized who this person was, and she informed her princess that this person is the Black Cloud sect commander. When Zhao Lingzi heard this, she recognized him and realized he was the master of the Shenwu Continent Center. Yi Jing Hong noticed the princess and Yin Shui chatting to each other. Yi Jing Hong looked ahead and stared at Huang Shao, informing him that he had been commanded to reclaim the treasure that Taoist Huoyan had left behind, and that he would never retreat. Yi Jing Hong was holding his hoe. He explained his teacher to Huang Xiao, saying that his master is someone with good fortune and unfathomable strength, and he even aided me. When he informed him that master would be angry even if he is a senior, Yi Jing Hong told him that the only way out is death. Huang Xiao, have you questioned your master? He inquired as to where he was, to which Huang Xiao replied, call him here so I can see him, he stated. Does he think a mere treasure is worth master personally coming here? Yi Jing Hong asks. Yi Jing Hong informed him that master has his own method of handling things and that this subject is already in his hands, he stated. 
Huang Xiao was stuck in shock, sweating bullets, and terrified of this enigmatic instructor. And he began to look around fast, terrified that this master was observing him. Huang Xiao clenched his fist and gritted his teeth, convinced that he had been duped and that this mystery powerful master did not exist. In rage, he told Yi Jing Hong that he had fooled and deceived an old man. He retorted, How dare you fool me? As a giant fire hand came down on Yi Jing Hong, he released his technique, the infinite fire palm. Yi Jing Hong expelled the hose aura. To stop Huang Xiao's onslaught, both Yi Jing Hong and Qin Potion released their weapons skyward with the assistance of Yi Qingwu and Qin Yin. However, the barrier that was around them collapsed, and all of them were blown away by the attack, and Yi Jing Hong coughed up blood as he was gravely injured. That was going on at the time. Feng Ling and the arrogant woman appeared. Lu Suyan, the haughty woman, sensed her master's power and appraised the situation, thinking he must be fighting. Feng Ling realized this as well, but Da Shan was still upset by Chen's abandonment. He began to grieve, believing that his master had abandoned him, and he asked himself, how could I not be worthy of being a mount for him? Qin Potion coughed up blood as he questioned himself. Could master have abandoned us? He believed he doubted it, but his faith in Chen was dwindling rapidly. Yi Jing Hong was also losing hope, believing that the mission master assigned to them would be impossible to execute. And both Qin Potion and Yi Jing Hong believed they had been abandoned. Da Shan had overheard what they had said about Chen. And he had a feeling that he wanted to confirm. Da Shan approached them and asked if the person they called master was named Chen. When Yi Qingwu, Yi Jing Hong, and the others noticed the alpaca speaking, they were all stunned and perplexed as to how an alpaca could speak. Thung Ling was astounded and startled that the giant sheep could speak. Even the arrogant woman was stunned and amazed when Feng Ling said this, but Da Shan didn't care because he was focused on Yi Qingwu and the others. Yi Qingwu said, yes, he is our master, she then inquired as to why he inquired. Huang Xiao was still hanging in the air, and they were continued fooling around, said Huang Xiao. What she saw next widened Yi Qingwu's eyes. The Black Cloud sect leader was hailed by the small girl riding Da Shan. Da Shan's eyes widened in rage as he witnessed this. He grinned and mumbled after a minute or two, I understand. After stating this, he unleashed more power than the leader of the Black Cloud sect. And Feng Ling screamed, and the arrogant woman swiftly pulled her away before she could be hurt. As he shouted, his aura changed to green, and his eyes blazed crimson. As he exclaimed, I see. Da Shan released a technique, so that's the case, he stated. Qin Yin's jaw fell in surprise when she heard that they didn't complete the task, and she wondered if this guy was sent by master to end it. Everyone else was as surprised as they were. Yi Qingwu sobbed, believing that their master had abandoned them and that Alpaca was about to murder them. However, the Alpaca did not charge at them. Instead, it went for the Black Cloud sect's leader, whose aura was blazing. Yi Qingwu was taken aback and perplexed. Da Shan screamed angrily at him, questioning how a mere sect master could not respect his master. Huang Xiao was taken aback since he didn't have time to dodge. Huang Xiao was shocked when he discovered who he was, Emperor Wu. He inquired. Da Shan's strike was deflected by Huang Xiao's technique. Emperor Wu smashed into Huang Xiao's technique, causing a massive shockwave. The location of Huang Xiao and Emperor Wu exploded. The third princess, Zhao Lingzi, and Yi Qingwu were taken aback. Da Shan finally unleashed a greater amount of power. Huang Xiao clenched his chest in pain, bleeding and bruised, and glanced at Da Shan, finally comprehending that the master they speak of is true. Yi Qingwu realized it was the backup master who had been dispatched, and she rejoiced that he had not abandoned them. Yi Jing Hong cried, and he looked up, saying, of course, and they're not anything master would give up. Huang Xiao landed heavily on the ground, and Zhao Lingzi stared back. Lu Suyan was shocked and wondered, could the mortal be a hermit immortal? As she remembered how Chen glanced at the coin boardly. Feng Ling was now sobbing, lamenting her deeds. Feng Ling raced to her grandfather, wailing, to check on him and protect him. Da Shan was preparing his strike to kill her grandfather while she was running towards him. Feng Ling stood in front of her grandfather to protect him and exclaimed, Sheepy, please, please spare my master, she stated. Da Shan came to a halt, 
his eyes widening in surprise, and he asks, could master have let this kid ride me because he likes the girl? He began to speculate, adding, or perhaps master wanted me to spare those individuals rather than destroy Feng Ling's master. Feng Ling and Huang Xiao were perplexed as to why Da Shan's massive foot had frozen in place. Something happened, and Emperor Wu cursed, realizing that this beast body couldn't handle his capabilities and would leak. He reasoned. He says this as though he needs to go to the bathroom. Da Shan then jumped away rapidly, landing far away on the earth. Feng Ling was silent looking at him. Da Shan was just staring blankly since he didn't know what to say. He began sweating bullets, convinced that it was all over and that he could no longer be an opponent. But before he could react, Da Shan was stunned to find Feng Ling and her grandfather kneeling on the ground and Huang Xiao praising him for saving his life. Da Shan sighed in relief and told them that he didn't have time to pardon them while he was kneeling. Emperor Wu was relieved because Huang Xiao didn't see it, else, it would have been the end of him, he thought. Yi Jing Hong bowed before Emperor Wu, thanking him for his assistance, and he inquired what he should call him. Emperor Wu introduced himself, informing him his name was Da Shan and that he was the master's mount. He then inquired, what did master order you to do? Yi Jing Hong responded, saying they are currently completing master's test and rescuing the treasure of the Taoist Huoyan. When Yi Jing Hong turned around, he was surprised to see the Taoist Huoyan. Da Shan spoke smoothly, instructing them to swiftly obtain the artifact and return it to master. But fast, he thought to himself, don't wait for him to respond. I won't be able to depart if he doesn't, Da Shan thought. Lu Suyan approached her master and inquired about his well-being. And as Feng Ling tried to help him get up, Huang Xiao replied that he is okay and that he didn't expect to see someone as powerful as the great Wu Emperor as a mount, and he can only think how unfathomable their master may be. Huang Xiao was fatigued when he inquired about why she used master's mount. Feng Ling became uneasy as she stammered her response to his query. After a few minutes, Feng Ling informed him what had happened, including how the arrogant woman literally took the master's mount. Huang Xiao shouted at her, two hours later, you damn fool, you dare to take their master's mount. He coughed out blood from yelling so loudly, and he continued to yell, warning her that the black cloud sect's thousand years of tradition will be destroyed because of her, and the arrogant woman was shocked hearing this. He began yelling, it's over, it's all over now. Chen, on the other hand, was on his way home. Suddenly, he began to cough. Chen came to a halt as he was breathing heavily, thinking to himself, everything in their Shenwu continent is good, but it's unfair for mortals. He protested that I had finally had a mount and it had been stolen from me, he said. Chen gazed ahead a minute later, determined, reminding himself that if he couldn't cultivate, he had to find another way, he remarked. Chen heard something coming from the trees and spotted Da Shan sprinting towards him, shouting in his animal language that he had completed the assignment. Da Shan was overjoyed to see his master again, and Chen was overjoyed to see him as well, praising Da Shan and telling him that he truly is a clever alpaca. When Da Shan spotted Huang Xiao, Lu Suyan the arrogant woman, and Feng Ling approaching them, he sneered at them. Chen was surprised to see them. Feng Ling was guilty, Huang Xiao was sorry, and the arrogant woman Lu Suyan was unhappy and sorry for her actions. Chen appeared cool on the outside, but he was panicked on the inside, questioning himself, how did the lady find him? He wondered if she had come to grab whatever he had left. After a little moment, he realized he had lost the broken piece of jade, and he envisioned Lu Suyan choking him, and he feared he was going to die. Chen pulled Da Shan aside and nervously smiled at them, telling them Da Shan returned on his own and that he didn't steal him. Da Shan simply stared at them with a murderous glare. When Chen glanced at the arrogant woman, Lu Suyan, she quivered in terror, as did Huang Xiao, but he continued to speak as he identified himself, informing him that he was the master of this wicked disciple, and he has come to ask forgiveness. Chen was taken aback when he heard this. While the elderly man appeared depressed on the outside, he was sweating bullets on the inside because he thought the master purposefully included the word steal, believing Chen still had a grudge against them. Chen was perplexed, wondering what he was talking about. Chen looked forward and saw Yi Qingwu approaching him, while Huang Xiao was terrified, believing Chen was about to kill him. When she noticed Chen looking at her, she smiled brightly, and Chen grieved, 
believing Yi Qingwu was the one who decided to take the lead for him in teaching this tyrant woman Lu Suyan and her lord Huang Shao. Thung Ling suddenly grabbed his hand, and Chen looked down to see who was holding his hand. And when he observed Feng Ling remark that they accept their mistakes, she begged him to spare her master and sister. Pretty please she said. Lu Suyan and Huang Xiao both screamed in their minds, shouting, Feng Ling, are you trying to kill us? Chen talked calmly to them, but in their eyes, Chen had a mad grin on his face and was speaking to them in a gloomy tone, assuring them that now that Da Shan has returned, they can forget all that happened in the past. He then informed them that he had misplaced the jade piece and that it was no longer theirs, he stated gently. They yelled, thank you, Senior Chen, and they bowed repeatedly as they rejoiced because Chen had spared their lives. Chen said nothing as he turned around and harshly instructed them to go. You guys came. Chen stated to Yi Qingwu, but he came to a halt and glanced at the third princess, Zhao Linji, and Yin Shui. He asked her whether those two were her pals after glancing at them. Yi Qingwu responded, saying, yes, they are. Yi Qingwu became concerned when she realized that they had brought people here. She became even more concerned since she didn't know if her lord would become enraged. The third princess introduced herself, adding, my name is Zhao Linji, but you can call me Xiao Zi. Yin Shui also introduced herself, adding that her name is Yin Shui, but he can call her Xiao Yin. Chen looked at them and believed those two dressed like wealthy and well-respected individuals, and although Chen was gazing at them, they were still scared he wouldn't accept them. Chen stared at Yi Jinghong and reflected to himself how sad he was compared to Elder Yi, whose family is poor and so Yi Qingwu had to provide for herself by cultivating. Yi Jinghong merely stared at him, unsure what he was thinking. Chen looked at Zhao Lingzi and Yin Shui and suggested that since everyone was friends, Miss Zhao Lingzi and Auntie Yin Shui join them for a supper. Yin Shui embarrassedly stroked her face, and she wondered if she was truly so old. A few minutes later, they were all at Chen's yard, and the powerful aura could be felt. Zhao Lingzi and Yin Shui were taken aback to discover that here was the immortal palace. Yi Jinghong then cleared his throat. Xiao Qi joyously came down from her swing brother's back. Yi Qingwu's eyes widened in surprise as he asked, isn't this the spiritual rabbit I gave to senior? She questioned herself. She wondered how it evolved into a human. Chen cheerfully smiled at Xiao Qi and asked if she had behaved well while he was gone. Xiao Qi replied with a smile, saying, of course I am, she said. Yi Qingwu looked at them and realized she hadn't expected the spiritual rabbit and senior to already have a brother and sister bond, so she resolved to respect her as well. Chen encouraged them to take a seat, and that he would prepare a wonderful supper for everyone today. Chen looked at Yi Qingwu, blushed slightly, and thought to himself that this was his way of thanking Yi Qingwu for taking the lead, and when Chen gave her that look, she blushed slightly. Yi Qingwu assumed Chen stared at her like that because he already knew they had completed the assignment he assigned. And she assumed he recognized her as a pawn. She then pulled out a Taoist Huoyan and remarked, Senior Chen, this is. She suddenly stopped herself, realizing that if she presented the treasure to the senior, it would ruin his masquerade as a mortal. Chen simply took it from her and replied, Yi Qingwu, you're too kind to always bring me a present. He stated kindly. Yi Qingwu was taken aback when he heard this. After a minute or two, Yi Qingwu just agreed with him, informing him that this was for the handkerchief he gave him the last time. Chen was astonished that she was talking about the handkerchief he had given the two of them, but Chen realized that only Yi Qingwu had considered returning a gift. Chen had an epiphany. Could it be that she likes me? He wondered, and he flushed, and Yi Qingwu reddened as well. Chen and Yi Qingwu both had googly eyes and were moving in closer to kiss each other, as if there were hearts all around them. Xiao Qi, on the other hand, was irritated that her big brother was not paying attention to her. Xiao Qi interrupted them as all the hearts around them began to break apart, and she shouted brightly, Big brother, open it. Chen was startled by the abrupt cry and muttered, Oh, all right. He began to open the gift, and Yi Qingwu, who was still blushing, glanced away. Xiao Qi gazed at her, and she looked at her angry. When Chen opened the gift, he discovered a plastic cloth with an aura surrounding it. He didn't notice because he was so surprised that this planet had plastic. I'm not sure whether to laugh or cry that there is plastic in the world or that plastic is one of the most powerful weapons in the world. Yi Qingwu glanced at it as well, 
and she was surprised that it was made of plastic because Huang Xiao had mentioned that it was made from the wings of the jade silkworm to make the cloud of cicada wings, and she wondered if this was another name for it. And Chen smiled as he was pleased that he has this item, asking her if he might have more. He believed it was ideal for a greenhouse, and he decided to create one during the offseason, which the Shenwu continent lacked, declaring, I want to start an agriculture empire in this world. Chen smiled and told Yi Jinghong and Qin Potion that he had something that might require their assistance. Both Yi Jinghong and Qin Potion responded, ask away, as they were delighted to hear an order from their lord. Yi Jinghong smirked, assuming the master desired something from the Taoist Huoyin treasure. Qin Potion was beaming as well, wondering if the master had devised a plan. They must adhere to each step and not squander any time. Chen, on the other hand, was contemplative. Chen urged them to assist him in recruiting some personnel. Recruit 200 people in one month, he informed them. And money isn't an issue, he says, but individuals must be dependable. Qin Potion and Yi Jinghong were both shocked, thinking Master had finally begun his plan to cultivate the planet. Qin Potion then remarked, this task of forming an army must be completed properly. Both Qin Potion and Yi Jinghong exclaimed happily, no problem, leave it to us. Chen was relieved that there would be laborers, and he thought, now that the work is scheduled, my love life will begin, Chen pondered, and as he looked at Yi Qingwu, she blushed. Chen then approached her and asked if she might accompany him for a while, to which Yi Qingwu consented. Yi Qingwu glanced at Chen with affection and admiration as he walked. And Xiaoqi was enraged and resentful of Yi Qingwu. Zhao Lingzi, Yin Shui, and Qin Yin stood there silently. Zhao Lingzi and Yin Shui were speechless when they saw Chen. Qin Yin gazed down, dejected. Meanwhile, Chen presented her an enigmatic box. And he handed it to her, saying it was for her. Yi Qingwu stared at the box with interest as he handed it to her. Chen believed that this method of experiencing love was the most secure. And if Yi Qingwu returns the gift the following time, I'm 90% sure she is interested in me, he told himself. And Yi Qingwu believed Master was finally presenting me with a prize, and she began to open the box. Yi Qingwu was startled to find no Taoist pattern, and she reasoned that it could not be from this planet. She then reasoned that the senior's gift must be really remarkable, yet did he offer me an average pendant? She doubted herself. Chen then asked hesitantly, if she liked it. She replied, uncomfortably and loudly, that she liked it. She was so nervous that she didn't even notice that she said Chen's name wrong. Yi Qingwu smiled forcefully, informing him that this jewelry was unique, but what did it mean? She inquired. While she was forced smiling on the outside, she was emotionless on the inside, believing Chen was advising her to keep things cool and not hurry for success. Chen flushed and scratched the back of his head, telling her that this was a jade pendant that he carried in his hand and symbolized his desire for martial arts. He went on to say that it's also the most valuable present he has right now. Yi Qingwu was taken aback when he heard this. She stared at the jade pendant and wondered, martial arts? She inquired. She wonders if her teacher is urging her to cultivate attentively. And she thought to herself, with my cultivation, even if I became a pawn to the senior. Yi Qingwu looked downcast, believing she was unworthy of receiving a magical weapon from senior. And she muttered to herself, I'm ashamed. Chen comforted her by touching her head, and she immediately realized as she whispered to herself, it seemed like I couldn't be too extreme in pushing the things I desire, she added. She will never forget the seniors who taught her, she pondered. She then assured Chen that she understood Mr. Chen's message and that she would carry this pendant with her at all times. Yi Qingwu began to wear the pendant, inadvertently posing sexily at him. Chen hastily grabbed his nose as blood poured from it, thinking by her side. Meanwhile, the skinny horse was blissfully munching on his grass. And when he saw Da Shan on his territory, he yelled fiercely, this is my turf. Da Shan just kept eating. However, after about a minute, he responded, informing him that he didn't care who came first or what he could accomplish. He can do it, too, Da replied to him. He told him he was also master's mount, but he wasn't, as he released his murdering intent, his eyes blazed red. He then asked the slender horse if he needed to explain anything else about his relationship with his master. The skinny horse was sweating bullets and staring at Da Shan in horror. 
Da Shan mockingly grinned, saying, I flattered the rabbit in the old tree, but you nah, you're weak, he stated. The skinny horses hesitantly remarked, Brother, I didn't recognize you, I offer this grass as a sign of respect. Da Shan responded, saying, Don't worry if I do. The slim horse wept, believing that his body was better suited for mounting, and he resolved to try even harder to improve his relationship with Master. Da Shan's eyes widened in fear as he asked the thin horse why the grass tasted so bad. The slender horse responded, saying that was the grass that Brother Dog and Crow had just cut. He imagined how they cut the grass, and he realized they did it with their mouth, and he became enraged because he was eating someone else's grass, which came from their lips. Then he spit out all the grass in his mouth and exclaimed, Nasty. Yi Jing Hong told them all that when it comes to raising an army for master, he will take responsibility for the chilling country, while Elder Qin will take responsibility for the Zhuao nation. Hearing this, Qin Poshin nodded, and Yi Jing Hong looked at Zhao Lingzi and Yin Shui. Yi Jing Hong wanted to say something, but Zhao Lingzi and Yin Shui remembered what they discussed with Chen Fan. Flashback. Yin Shui asked Chen if she may stay and cut the grass and look after the livestock. Chen was astonished to hear this, and he informed her that, while he could only give food and shelter, he could also provide a paycheck, and he asked her if she was sure this was what she wanted. Yin Shui embarrassed and informed him that she didn't mind her awkwardness as long as he didn't mind her clumsiness, she added shyly. Zhao Lingzi spoke up, saying that she could water the bloom, he can also include her. Chen consented with a bright smile, informing them that they could work together, then go back and pack their luggage before returning. End of flashback Yi Jing Hong went on to tell them that they had to obey master's directions and stay in the yard to accomplish some tasks. Zhao Lingzi and Yin Shui bang, and they flew away, and Yi Jing Hong became serious and spoke sincerely, saying, Yi Ching Wu, you know today you made a big mistake. Yi Ching Wu was astonished to hear this and asked her father what he meant. Her father indicated that, while she completed the mission assigned to her by the master, she became complacent, which was a terrible mistake. Yi Jing Hong continued to persuade her that she had acquired feelings for him as a pawn for master, which was a mistake. Hearing this, Yi Ching Wu became depressed. Another major misunderstanding. I can't believe it. Anyway. Yi Jing Hong chuckled a little, informing her that she knew she wasn't worthy of master. Yi Ching Wu glanced down, puzzled, as she couldn't understand how her father knew, but master didn't know, as he questioned himself, how can master not know? Yi Ching Wu sobbed, wondering why he didn't offer her a prize but a pendant. Chen, she reasoned, was merely trying to keep her in check because she couldn't be too wishful thinking. Yi Jing Hong became aware of something in the bushes. Huang Xiao appeared from the bushes, and Yi Jing Hong cried like a girl, astonished and terrified by Huang Xiao's abrupt arrival. Yi Jing Hong then said, Why hasn't he left yet? And seeing him here astonished Yi Ching Wu as well. Huang Xiao recounted that when Master commanded him to move, he squatted at the bottom of the mountain and reflected on his deeds. For some reason, Yi Jing Hong began to sweat bullets and responded, assuring Huang Xiao that he was on the correct route. Yi Jing Hong lied to him, saying that the master did not kill him because he expected him to honestly reflect on his conduct and be useful. Huang Xiao was speechless, informing him that he knew. The wicked disciple did something wrong, but the master did not kill him, and he assumed Chen would murder him because he wanted to utilize him. And he told him that if master needs anything, he may always order him. Is it just me, or are the people on this planet becoming increasingly insane? Yi Jing Hong pointed to his daughter and presented her to him, saying, This is Yi Ching Wu. And Master has instructed her to find more of the cloud of cicada wings, which are the dark cloud sect's valuables, and he should help her, he said. Huang Xiao bowed deeply and stated, I will do my best. Yi Jing Hong responded admirably. And Yi Ching Wu just wiped her tears away, telling herself it's best to put those wishful thoughts aside and focus on being Master's pawn, she thought. Meanwhile, Back at Chen's house, Chen applied black ink to his brush. Chen reasoned to himself that enrolling a large number of people would necessitate a large sum of money, and fortunately for him, his calligraphy can sell for a premium price. Xiaoqi was in awe of Chen, believing that Chen could eliminate the stars with a single stroke. She wondered if her master was a star-born descendant. Chen has just finished writing an advertisement. Xiaoqi, on the other hand, 
noticed that Chen's words were different from what he was supposed to write, and the words were, second, power of understanding. Only by comprehending the true meaning of calligraphy can one benefit from their distinct style and a minor accomplishment in calligraphy. Don't be happy with things, don't be sad by yourself, peace will come soon, she closed her eyes, I will your liberty. She continued reading, third, the union of man and heaven. In order to achieve the unity of man and heaven, one must not lack setting. Even if it is a grand master of a restricted god, there can only be one that can reach this realm in every one or two lifetimes. Oh, so that's why he's an ignorant fool and not noticing his own power because he's a restricted god. Anyway, Xiao Qi questioned herself, aren't those two paragraphs talking about Chen? She opened her eyes in horror, thinking that Master was once on the top, looking down on the world, and now he is a mortal, experiencing the mortal world. It appears that Xiao Qi has discovered the truth to some extent. As he finished writing, Chen began to put his brush down. Chen sighed, and Xiao Qi was surprised that Chen believed this writing wasn't good enough. And he groaned heavily again, widening Xiao Qi's eyes. Xiao Qi was still staring at him in disbelief, saying, Brother, you wrote this very well, and you're still not satisfied. Chen reasoned that with money, he could not only build a greenhouse but also go on a date with Yi Qingwu, and he began to visualize himself on a date and going sightseeing with her. It's been three days, and Yi Qingwu hasn't returned a gift, and he shed a tear, thinking he overthought it? Chen's eyes widened in surprise. That even the skinny horse can pull that much. He glances at 100 acres, as he was shocked that everything had been fertilized. When it was going on, the skinny horse shook as he was fatigued, telling himself, I can still eat, I can still pull. But before he could say anything else, he collapsed and fainted. Xiao Bai, Sha Wu, and the demonic ant were all taken aback. Chen grinned sheepishly because his grass had laxatives added to it, and it still didn't work. Chen was perplexed because this made no sense to him. Chen examined it and spoke to himself, but all of his creatures were listening to him as he stated, it appears that the disease is so severe that I can't detect it, and if I slaughter it now, the meat is still salvageable. Chen stated. Chen stated that it is no longer alive. There's nothing I can do, he said. All of his pets were shocked to learn that the skinny horse had died. When she heard what Chen said, Xiao Qi screamed. That's all for now.